Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, welcome back to another episode of Canode Knows, you nerds. Um, this week on the show we got Desmond, black man, Rhodes. I've told a couple people that don't know BMX, I was like, I got to interview black man, and they were like, that's racist. You don't get it, dude. Hood Happy NYC. <clears throat> I thought it was kind of funny, try, me trying to, me, a kid from the suburbs in Peoria, Arizona, trying to relate to Desmond's uh, struggles in life. And uh, he's had a much more difficult roll of the dice than most of us have. And uh, one hell of a story with BMX and everything that he's done slash been through slash going to do. So I had a good time. Yeah, I don't feel like talking too much. So here's here's my little conversation with Black Man. Nobody nobody calls you Black Man anymore, but I, I can't wait to say hi, Black Man. What's up? No, you can do that. It don't matter. What's up, D Rose? D Rose forty five. Desmond. How you doing? I'm doing good, dude. Mr. New York City. It's good to see you, King of New York. I don't know if we've ever like <laughs> spoken before. We just spoke on Instagram. Like DMs. I don't think we ever spoke. I don't think we ever spoke before. We just spoke on Instagram, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's good to finally have you on and get you on the record and talk. How's uh How's the holidays treating you? Well, I really don't celebrate Christmas because I never got shit. To be honest with you. <laughs> but <laughs> besides That's real? that, the holidays, the holidays, the holidays. You know, I don't yeah. got no kids or nothing. I'm, I'm on my own in the world. You got a You got a girl. Um, at these times and in, in, in years and days, we all got girls, I believe, right? Chicks <laughs> yeah. is crazy though, man. A chick will be your downfall, so you got to be careful who you're dating these years. This is true. Uh, shit. How was 2023 for you? We're, we're recording this on New Year's Eve. I didn't even think about that when I was like, let's record Sunday. And this is the last day of the year. Last day of the year. First interview of the year, too. Yeah, for real. Welcome to 2024. Uh, yeah, welcome to 2024. The four or five year. Um, 2023 was good. You know, I've been riding. Still trying to kill shit. The biggest problem I have right now, I don't have a filmer. But I'm working on that. I actually, I actually got my sneaker dropping this year I made. What? So I got, yeah, I got the Devo's 45 sneakers coming. How do you make a sneaker? Well, I, I don't know if you noticed lately. A lot of skateboarders been making a lot of fake Nike dunks. A lot of people's making aftermarket like Jordan ones, stuff like that. So right now with this phone and everything being independently as an artist, there's a lot of options out here. So China has a lot of ways to make sneakers. So I just had to find a connection through China and basically just, you know, make up a mock-up of what type of sneaker I want, find the right connect for it pay for it right now i got the mold coming through so i'm gonna have shoes sick fuck yeah how is so how has it been because i know i just got finished listening to your tcu tv episode again and you were talking about hood happy dot nyc that well, ain't that's not a thing anymore is <laughs> is what do you have a hood happy website going no i don't have a hood happy website i traded hood happy like 15 years ago you traded I it that I traded 15 years ago. Oh, okay, got you. So it's like, I still got the trademark and stuff. I actually just been trying to get my life together, so I fell back on things. I, I didn't stop riding or nothing, but it's like, I could push my own brand, but I don't have the income or the money to push things. How can I push it the right way, you know? Right, yeah. That's tough. And you gotta, it's hard right. to prioritize, like, trying to make it with a BMX brand or just a brand in general when you don't have your shit together. Like, so what do you mean when you're trying to get your shit together? How's it? How's that been going? Well, I don't, you know, I've been on my own since I was about 12 years old. So life always been hard for me because I don't really have no family or nothing. All the riding videos I have, I was homeless, you know. I yeah. used to sleep on trains. I used to sleep anywhere. I used to sleep at the Brooklyn Banks. I actually used to sleep at the Brooklyn Banks between the, um, between the pillars with a cup of tea. With a cup of or tea. Sometimes I'll cross the, yeah, with a cup of tea. Or sometimes I'll cross the street and go to, um, across the street to the projects. And I sleep in a hallway in the projects also when I was a kid. Damn. So you're so comfortable sleeping on me, but... sleeping on hard hard floor. You you'll be fine once the apocalypse comes, you yeah. know. You'll be running yeah, the show. Yo, floor, street, floor. Anyway. I used to live in Georgia in an abandoned warehouse for like two years too. Damn. 
And then uh, I, I know you lived in the back of Post. That's the bike shop, I right? Yeah, I lived, I, I lived in the, base, the basement of Post bike shop. Yeah. That's after I came back from, I think, Georgia when I was younger. So I don't want to, like, repeat everything that came from the Come Up interview, but I do kind of want to hear your your story. Um, so take me through... <laughs> Take me through the life of D Rose. Well, to be honest with you, I'm 34 years old. I've been riding a bike since I was like damn near half or more basically my whole fucking life. Um, besides that, I'm really from the struggle, man. I don't come from a good home. I don't come from good meals every night. I come from the streets. You know, I've been on my own since I was a little kid. Uh my mother was around sometimes, you know, my father was a big drug addict so I guess I kind of pushed my mother from me too because the drama from my from my father what drugs but besides that I would say uh my father was still doing a lot of crack cocaine and stuff like that yeah like I grew up I grew up riding you know I, I was born in 89 so I grew up kind of like the late crack era in New York City yeah so I grew up around a lot of drugs bikes I mean a lot of drugs violence you know, a lot of stuff a kid shouldn't see, but I noticed that if I have a bike, I can ride out my neighborhood and see better things. So I always try to ride my bike to get out the community, get out the hood to see better things in life. So I would take dope. a bike out of garbage can. I would take a bike out of garbage can, things like that, just to get my, you know, get freedom from the struggle. That's got to feel good. I mean, I can't relate in the least bit, but. I, I, I can relate to the feeling of freedom and pedaling away from where I live. Like, that's it's a hell of a bike, feeling. Bike you know? riding. Bike riding. The, the pedals, riding your bike is the best feeling in the world. Skateboard, whatever you do, scooter, whatever you do that can release your energy into the positive matter, you know? Yep. Because life is short, bro. I'm truly blessed. I've been through so much stuff in life. And as now, as I, I'm, as I get older, I just want to, like, film... I don't know about two more video parts or whatever I could do. I'm just trying to film something for New York. Cause I feel like New York, the BMX scene is dying off. You know, you got A and PM. Joey been filming a video with uh Davy the Great, Ralph, and all these other kids. They got a video coming up. They dropped the last video last year. Shit was fire. So Joey so Joey's been filming. I don't really have no clips. I think I got like one clip in the video. Because a lot of these kids don't want to put stuff on Instagram. And I've been telling them lately, like People want to see that clip right now. They want to click that clip right now. They want to see your lifestyle. They want to know what you're doing in life. It's wild, so huh? Shit's changed. This year, yeah, this year shit changed. That's why I'm trying to really blog and hold shit down. Yeah, you uh, making blogs? I'm going to start. Yeah, it's the first. I, I, I guess it's, That's an interesting life you have. I'd, I'd watch that. I guess, it's, I, guess it's the, I guess this is the first one right now. <laughs> yeah. What's what's today look like? Well, today shit. I'm really I was gonna ride my bike for a little bit. It's kind of cold. It's not that cold in New York, like people saying. It's not back in the day cold. It's basically like fifty degrees or forty five, a little stuff like that. That's not too bad. It's cold, man. man. Yeah. So you're a kid, and uh, you use the bike to get away. And I, I mean, I kind of know the story, but like. Fill us in. Well, I, I, I tell you, I tell you the real story. Basically, um, you know, my father was a big drug addict, so he'd take he 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 like you know steal things from my moms and steal things from my my moms after she came from work just to get high, steal things out the house. So I think that at a young age, you know, I see my mother going through a lot. So my mother would leave my pops, and, you know, she go to my stepfather's house or whatever. But I was always in the streets. Like my mother couldn't really control me because. I just kind of didn't have no hope. And I was riding bikes. Like, I literally was riding bikes, street riding at 12, 13 years old. I was doing squatty grinds to 180. Like, a lot of people probably don't know this, but before I even heard of Edwin De La Rosa or any of these riders in New York, I used to ride with the Ghetto Boys. Uh, we used to call it, um, damn, what was that shit called again? Um, oh, Hardcore Street Riders. Yeah. So the riders I the, the riders I used to ride when I was, I mean, underground street riders. That's what we used to call it back in the day. So the riders I was riding with, they all had standard, standard countries. I mean, standard ST5, uh, S, you know what I mean, standard uh, ST500, 250, the caches, 
And I kind of seen Ed in the Standard Country video doing that line where he does a feeble 180 and stuff like that. And I actually used to watch Gons a lot in Rap Boy. So this, before which I even is wild. About, I heard you talk about that in the come up video, and I was like, that's that's my home turf. Those are the boys. So that's how I found out about Della Rosa because I seen him in the Standard video, Standard Country video back in the day. How'd you see that video? You know, uh, we used to have a DVD, not a DVD, we used to have a cassette tape. And the cassette tape will go around on all the riders that we know. Nice. Different times. So we dude. just watched the cassette tape. Yeah. So the riders I grew up with, they used to bully me. They used to be like, black man, if you don't hit a handrail, we're going to beat you up. The riders I used to grow up with, they used to take bikes, split the parts up through the team. You know, if you was a non rider, probably to yap you. So, like, what's that mean? Yap you. I stole bikes. Yap you means they, you know, they, stole, they stole your bike. Like, I stole bikes and shit, but I never, like, physically beat nobody up for their bike enough. You know, I just did the pedal right away. <laughs> Swoop. That's how that's that's the generation I grew up in. The riders I grew up with, they were taking bikes and riding every day killing shit. Huh. So I think my my first handrail I was I had to be at about twelve. Tell me about it. You know, so my first handrail I had to be about twelve. I had like a dyno GT. What else? Um I basically used to take bikes out of garbage cans. I used to go to the um, alleyways in Brooklyn, like the Jewish areas. And Jewish people always leave their bikes outside in the alleyways. Like little, it could be a pink bike, girl bike, whatever. I was riding that shit. I put a little four pegs on it. Like the other day, my mother gave me a picture. I'm like 13 years old, trying to tell it. I posted on Instagram, and I got four pegs on my bike. Is it a pink bike? Nah, the bike is the bike is regular. If you look at the the thing I just posted with the sneaker, if you like look at the video, there's a yeah. picture up there. I'm 13 right there with four pegs. Where are you at? There it is. Yeah, oh, shit. That yeah, look at that baby, dude. Yeah, I'm a baby right there. Yeah. So that picture... That Four picture pegs, that's a 16-inch bike, too. That's a tiny bike. Yeah, it's a tiny bike. Hell yeah. With four pegs, I got the Harrow. I got the Dave Mirror Harrow blue seat right there. Mm-hmm. So you've been doing it. <clears throat> I've been and doing it. I'm still doing it. You were living with your mom until... A stepdad came in the picture. What age yeah, is this? Like, I'm about thirteen. Okay. But then um, you know, I fucking um I didn't really get along with my stepfather, so I was running the streets a lot. So I would get arrested and my mom instead of taking me home, she told the priest to keep me and they put me in foster care. So from like I could basically say from ten to about thirteen, I was in foster care, then I tried to go back home. But I wasn't listening. And I was like just straight riding my bike, running the streets. So my mother tried to put me back in foster care. I was in foster care from, I say, 13 or 14. But I kept on running away. What was it like? Foster care. Was, you know, it was just harsh. It's just a harsh life living in a shelter or living in a group home with kids. It's, you know, ungrateful. Don't really have nothing. You know, everybody is just, you know, the, the most I remember is just being in a fucking police van. Locked up as a little kid, just thinking like this ain't right. I should go home, but home is not right either. Cause you know, I know my mom's working two, three jobs just to take care of herself and the kids. The kids she has. Do you have any siblings? Um, I have a I have an older brother, which I don't talk to no more. I have an older sister. I have another sister, and I have a, um, I have a younger brother. You talk to him, younger brother. Yeah, now I talk to everybody. You know, it's not like back in the day. I talk to my younger brother. My younger brother rides Harley Davidsons and shit. Oh shit! Cool. No, he's <laughs> kind of, he's, he's, told, he's totally the he's totally the opposite of me. <laughs> How so? Because <laughs> I'm more like you know I'm I'm just sometimes too hood or just too street. Even though you know my mind is focused on bigger things in life. You know, um, my brother's just he's like a punk rock kid. He's totally different to me. He wears tight. Leather coats, tight jeans. Punk rock kid, let's go. Yeah, he's a punk rock kid, yeah. <laughs> That's dope. Um, all right, so we're getting out of foster care, and then we just start living on the streets. When? How old? Like, I can't even imagine, dude. Like, how old are you when you like are kicked out of the? Did you, did you get kicked out of the system? Like, how does that shit work? Did you just left? You well, ran away? I actually, I actually see. I'm, I was pretty. I was a pretty smart kid. I knew how to take the train system. So my grandmother had a house back in um Queens on like 134th and Liberty and I would take the train I would walk from like Brooklyn all the way to Queens when I was younger just to go to my grandmother's house because I, I didn't go to my mother's house so my grandmother would hide me from my mother and then my mother found that I'm in the house 
and the ACS to try to come back and get me. And I'm Damn. telling my mom, like, I'm not going back. Fuck that. I'm going riding. Like, riding's been my life since a baby, bro. My cousin taught me how to ride a bike in Virginia Beach when I was, like, seven years old, eight years old. And I just never stopped pedaling since then. Yeah, I mean, that's all you know. That's the only escape you had, I think. Right? It's got to be. Yeah. I, I'm I'm pretty happy with riding, bro. Once I had the cover when I was like fifth, not but well, I came out when I was six, came out on my birthday. But when I had the cover, I was happy, bro. Like I'm from the hood. That's that's all I ever wanted was a pitch in a magazine. You know, I've been to Dave Mirror House. I've been in the X Games before as a special guest. So basically, I didn't know I that. I didn't know the X Games bit. That's fire. Yeah, I won a contest in uh I don't know if you remember Jimmy Mack. that used to run Bulldog Bikes. Yeah, Jimmy Max. Jimmy Matt got me the, uh, a free trip to California. That's like the first time I went to California. I went to the S Games. S Games Sick. paid for everything. The hotel, everything. Plane nice. ticket. I think it was like 2016. I mean, 2018 that shit happened. I don't remember. 20... No way. No, no, it wasn't 2018. You, you did the come up interview in 2015. Yeah, 2005 yeah, so that, is what we're talking about. 2009. 2009. 2009. All right, what? Yeah. 2009. Shit. I'm 19. You're 20. Fucking, yeah, yeah definitely what 2000. The thing that tripped me up is because I I remember being young and looking up and seeing Black Man on the cover of the magazine and just this like idea I had of like they're making it, they're making a living off of BMX. But really, like the the older I got, the more I realized like oh shit, no, they weren't. You know, like it. Did you at did, nah, at any point know, were like, you making a living off of writing? Nah, I never. I, I made like. The most money I ever made from BMX is when I did a Converse commercial with Jim Jones. I barely was in a commercial, but they sent me like thirty thousand dollars. Damn. TV checks. Yeah. They sent me like, but and I didn't get the whole thirty, but it came like partially checks. Me and my homeboy Porno, we got them checks. That's the most money I ever made from BMX. Besides that, Base Brooklyn used to give me a check for a bitch ass like hundred dollars a month, but then they kicked me off of Base Brooklyn. Like I got a lot of like hate after I had the cover. And People try to like blame it on me and say this and that, but I know I know what was the deal from from day one. What's the deal then? Well, the deal right now, nobody really ride no more. <laughs> you know what I mean? But <laughs> they they's not out. You know the, these guys ain't out here killing it. But you know when I had the <laughs> what's the fight? <laughs> when I had the um when I had the rock cover, you know, bitch ass Edwin gave, gave me um. He gave me his back wheel and a bike I had, they spray painted at the shack, yellow and black. You know, he used to hit me with the paintball guns. But no, but no, fun, no, no, happy fun shit, playing around. So long story short, you know, I had the cover and I had Edwin sneakers on. I had Edwin sneakers on. I had the low techs. I had Edwin back rim and I had the bike. Everybody told me I couldn't do that ledge. I mean, every fucking body like everybody ed was the only one that kind of believed in me he's like black you really gonna do the ledge i'm like yeah he got the lecky over there the lecky um came there i i grinded it and then the second time i landed the first try i don't know if you watched the footage but when i grind the ledge i hop off and i rode off from everybody because i couldn't even believe i landed it yeah that was my high school when i was you know i would come out of school every day and i'm like yo i gotta grind this ledge this ledge is fucking possible bro yeah i was only 15 and at that time, I was going to school, and I was living at the shack. What's the shack? The shack is the old house that Vinny, Edwin, um, Tyrone, Jerry, Mister AKA like fucking fat bitches at the crib, <laughs> and um, who else? And Skirbo, Bob Skirbo was at the crib. What was that like? <clears throat> that was the best time of my my life as a as a as a youth. You know, riding, you know, um, staying at the pros' house and stuff like that because you know. I pulled up to the house with a big ass bag of clothes. And Vinny was like, I remember she was like, yes, sir. oh, you can't stay here. And then I was like, oh, you can't stay here. And I jumped on the couch and I never moved. <laughs> Dips. I feel like if I, didn't, if I didn't do that, my career wouldn't extend it because before I even met Edwin or any of these guys, I was riding street. I was doing rails. I was doing feeble 180s, uh, feeble hard 180s, things like that. Only kind of thought about Edwin because, you know, he was black. And I'm black. And I was like, oh, this guy's the only black kid that's riding BMX right now doing shit, you know? So at the time being, I used to ride with these other guys like uh, named Keon. It was this guy named Keon. Keon was, it was Keon 
and this other guy, Adam Armstrong. Adam Armstrong passed away. But Adam Armstrong was nice just as Edwin, and Keon was nice just as Edwin. But Keon was a little bit more crazy because Keon kind of grew up in the Van Homan era. Like, I kind of grew up in the Van Homan era. That's why I kind of ride. Like, I do big rails. I try to do, like, dead man shit. Yeah. Because I grew up, all the riding I seen back in the day was just going for shit. You know what I mean? It wasn't really too much technical. The technical was there, but it's basically go big or go home. So that's why I ride the way I ride like that. I used to watch a lot of Van Homan videos. I used to watch Little Devil all the time before right. I came out the house. So, you know, I never really, like, watched the Edwin part. I was watching Van Homan. You know what I mean? I was watching Standard Country. I was watching The Gons. I was watching Rat Kid. I mean, Rap Boy. I was watching stuff like that. So before I even heard of these guys in New York City that rode BMX, in my mind, BMX was already Standard Country. You know? Rat Boy. I mean, Rat Kid. And, I mean, what if, you know what I mean? Rat Boy, fucking um, The Gons, shit like that. So that's what I was watching. Because I don't know if you remember when Standard Country had that little kid. They yeah. had country had this little kid in the video that would jump downstairs and shit like that. He would grind ledges and shit. Like he would go up to a ledge and feeble it. Yep. So I kind of felt like that little kid represented me because I was the little kid riding around with the street riders that was getting bullied and stuff like that. Like, oh, if you don't hit, hit this handrail, we're gonna take your bike. If you don't do this, we're gonna give you a wedgie. Shit like that, you know? Yeah, which I I like. I you know, I can relate to that a little bit. And like I've I was always like the the young one in the group and like the the one getting shit on and all that. And then at some point it's like, I don't even know how to act is not the young one of the group. Like, did you have that kind of like, when did you stop feeling like the little kid? At what I point? Started, I, I stopped feeling like the little kid. I could say after I had the cover, because you know, once I had the cover, I, I was happy. I won. I didn't really care about getting sponsored or traveling the world, which I wanted to do because I wasn't trying to be in the streets no more, you know? But everything took a big left, and people will say, oh, Desmond did this, Black Man did this. Really, people just, I was just, I think I was just ahead of my time at that age. Because I, I did the I did the ledge, and then I did live in an exile with bitch-ass Nigel. <laughs> bitch-ass Edwin and, and bitch-ass Nigel, too. Yeah, they some, they some bitch-ass niggas. They know what I mean by that. I could say that, because I really know him. You know, I ain't no groupie, so <laughs> I don't really, I don't fuck with Nigel. And Edwin, I fuck with, but I don't fuck with, because Edwin be moving funny sometimes. But I still huh. got love for him. Yeah. You know, because I'm a real person. I still got love for bitch ass Nigel too, but Nigel's a straight bitch, you know? So I don't want people saying, oh, you saying that because he's put on. I'm not I'm saying that because I've known him since I was a kid. And he shows me no type of affection or no type of nothing. He acts like I'm the enemy when he's the one that got every sponsor in the world. He's the one that's been doing the same tricks for the past 13 years and don't progress. Yeah, what what do you I think is the what's the what makes Nigel and uh, what makes Nigel successful and what makes him a bitch, according to you? Well, I, I believe he's successful because he got a good team behind him. You know, or I told Adam 22, too, somebody's touching his booty hole. He got his booty hole touching <laughs> the they, 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 they doing that right now, you know? Dude, yeah, I don't doubt that they're doing that. I just don't. I doubt that that's how Nigel got there. <laughs> I believe maybe, it. Let me, tell you why, let me tell you why I believe it. Okay. Once I see him get butt ass naked in that magazine. Oh, yeah, he did get butt ass naked in the magazine. I said, yo, I said, bro, he got butt ass naked. Somebody's touching his butthole. Because you understand, <laughs> sir. The progression, like, be honest with you, Nigel stole all his tricks from Edwin. His whole style is Edwin. I used to catch Edwin come out the house, do 10 180 boss spins, and Nigel go out the house and do the same thing Nigel did. You know, Nigel, I don't really feel like he's an original bike rider because he stole the style from Edwin. It's not an original style. Edwin has his own style, maybe a little bit from Gons, but he mixed it up with his own swagger, you know? Mm -hmm. Nigel would do Boston, 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 Boston. He got all that from Ed. You know, so when I when I look with Ed and his riders, I kind of open my eyes up to see how Skirbo ride, how Tyrone ride, how Vinny ride, you know, how Edwin ride. Like, I would see, I, I would look at everybody riding just to make my own style of riding. Like, you know what I mean? I wasn't trying to be like nobody else. I was just trying to be original and be myself. Yes, sir. To be honest with you. Um, but, you know, he, he he blew up and did what he did. I'm not hating on his success. You know, I just don't like the fact, like, it's been times, I remember when he first got on Nike. I was going through Flushing Metal Park. He had about 80 cameramen with him. This is the first time he got on Nike before he did the ads. It was 9 o'clock in the morning. And I asked him. He's like, yo, I can't fuck with you right now, black man. I'm with Nike. You got to leave. Ah, ah, ah. And I felt like, yo, that's some bitch-ass nigga shit because, nigga, 
you knew me since I was 10 years old. You're 17, and I'm like 16 or 15 right now. Oh, I, I think I think it was like he was 19 or something like that, and I was like 17, something like that. But he always pushed me to the side. Once he got put on, he started moving real fifty. That's like the same thing when I came back from um when I came back from Mirror Crib. When I went to Mirror Crib, bro, let me tell you something. I went to Mirror Crib with $150 in my pocket. I had no money. I had no moms to call to be like, yo, you know, I need money to go on a trip. But on the other hand, Nigel comes from a good home in Long Island, you know. Comes from a, you know, he got his brother, he got his moms, you know. He comes from a good base. Me, I'm in the streets. Like, I'm really in the projects, bro. Like, I'm really sleeping with in the, around the struggle. I'm really seeing murder, drugs, crime every day, trying to keep focused and keep my head straight and just ride my bike and try to prosper and bike riding. It got to the point where I was like, maybe if I get a couple of sponsors, I could try to leave the hood. But at the end of the day, I'm still black. Um, you know, people are gonna put put their put dirt on my name because the thing about New York City and the thing about California, California, everybody accepts everybody for who they are. California is like this, we're riding. It might be a little intervene, but it's still like this. You know what I mean? I call you, you call him, you call him. Everybody rides together. New York City is not like that. And right. back in the day, it was kind of like that because they had scavenger. But the scavenger niggas was not fucking with nobody that came from anywhere else. Like, you wasn't coming to New York riding. and We wasn't going to show you no spots and stuff like that. Yeah. So the scene is kind of different. So you're talking, like, within BMX, like, the cliques. Like, California is yeah. all together and New York is separated. Like Yeah, New York is very separated. This crew doesn't fuck with that crew. Um, So let's let's see. You're, I don't know. Fucking eight. What happens when around... Being to, like you get brushed off by Nigel, then you're 20, then what? Did like, yeah, to just keep going well, with I your really got career. Brushed off, I got brushed off. I got brushed off by a lot of people, and I really felt like people would say, "Oh, black, you're Grammy or whatever." I never punched Nigel in the face. I had a fist fight with Ed when I was little, you know, and me and Ed still love each other. Ed came out of jail, I think a year ago. I gave Ed one four hundred dollars, and I'm calling him a bitch ass nigga because. I seen that he unfollowed me on Instagram. So I'm like, and then he said some shit to me the other day, like a black, I don't know how you keep on going to jail and coming out of jail. You must be stitches. So I, at first I thought he was playing, but then I started seeing that he was serious about that. I'm like, I don't understand what you mean by that, bro. You know what I mean? My bail was $100,000. I paid $10,000. I paid my lawyer $5,000. I beat the charge. I didn't stitch with nobody. I, I got locked up because something I did. You know, somebody killed my dog and I beat him up and I got locked up for it. Damn, somebody killed your dog? Yes, and they killed my dog I had for 12 years, bro. Fuck. And made it seem like I'm the one, you know, the problem. Bro, that's awful. That's and terrible. That's why I, I had that dog for almost 11, 12 years. I can't say that I wouldn't do the same, at least. like They were going to try to give me five years in prison, but I don't got no criminal record. Yeah. You know, so it's like I had to take a program or some shit like that, then the case got dismissed. Or not what is dismissed. This? Huh? When was this? This is like uh three years ago. Okay. Yeah. That'd be three and a half years ago now. I don't know if you've seen the footage of me being on the news, but Adam Adam twenty two seen that he posted on the store on his on his Instagram. Nah. I didn't see yeah, it. I was on the news. I was on the news and Pete I went to Woolworth on my birthday and motherfuckers came and got me. First Damn. time at Woolworth, I got arrested. Broke my heart. Shit. <laughs> You're like I'm in paradise man. Whoop whoop. Fuck. Yeah, and, and and it happened on my birthday. That's a shitty birthday. Yeah, bro, I was in there for like 12 days, and I had to get extradited back to New York and shit like that. Then I had to bail out, all this shit, bro. So you got arrested because... in Pennsylvania, and you're in a Pennsylvania jail, and you got sent back to New York. Fucking A, dude. Yeah, That's wild. So I don't, I don't, you know what I mean? I don't glorify jail, and I don't glorify being a thug, you know? Yes, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a thug at times because I grew up in the streets. I grew up in the trenches. There's nothing... Happy about how I grew up. A lot of people that really know me really know that I was sleeping outside on trains, thirteen, with nothing in my pocket, trying to survive and ride a BMX bike. Yeah. So you know, for me to see my close best friend get put on and act like he don't know me or act like I'm a threat, or maybe I am a threat because I'm I, I probably go crazy in you. I ride I ride better than you, or I'm just a threat because I'm the hood kid. You know, and like right now, back in the day, if you too hood, people scared of you. They want you to be like you know the corporate. A uh, Caucasian white guy, but act like a black guy. Like you're your black, but you gotta act like you white. You know what I mean by that? Yeah. So right now, everybody's glorifying the hood shit. 
You know? Yeah. So right now, you got all these kids. Like, I knew since back in the day, the hood loves riding bikes. All the kids want to do woolies. Like, even when I seen R and I D blocks. I used to see R and I D blocks back in the day, woolying and shit, acting crazy. I was like, what the fuck is this kid doing? That's not street riding. 20 years later, everybody's doing woolies. Yep. He found kids his own working. Changes. Kids is not worrying about buying a BMX bike and jumping down 15, 20 steeds because they could do a woolly and fit in with the, the kids from the hood in the community. Yeah. So if you look at the scene right now, it's actually easier for a BMX rider because we could do better tricks than the woolly kids. But most of these corporations and companies want woolly kids right now. They don't care about a BMX kid. Saying they do care about a BMX kid depends how's your agent and who you got, you know, putting you in front of the, uh, corporate America. But at the same time, with the cell phone, with the internet, and everybody being independently and pushing their own brand, you could blow up off your just personality off the talking on the phone. Yeah, and I think that's kind of where the whole world slash every industry is at right now. Is it's it's devolved from like needing a filmer and a a middleman between you and being seen. It's like you are responsible for being seen. So uh yeah, fucking A. That's like like Anthony Panza don't fuck with Billy Perry. You know what I mean? Yeah, why is that? I don't know anything about this. Well, uh... I think I'm not, you know, I'm I'm just I'm just I'm just, I'm speaking for the East Coast. I Billy Perry and Pants used to be best friends. Like yeah. me and Nash used to be best friends, you know? Yeah, I remember that. But I guess because if some shit happened with I don't really know the basic story of it, but I just know something happened with they was filming at that motherfucking um skate park. And everybody got locked up. You remember that when they got on the news and shit for riding that skate park? I remember they got... No, that was Austin Augie. I'm confusing my New York shit. But it, I, uh, it, getting Hansa jumped and for Billy a bike. Curry and a, a couple of other kids got arrested for riding a, a water park in Long Island. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Remember that? So I guess yeah. after that situation, they don't really fuck with each other, you know? Interesting. But I, I fuck why. with Panzer. I, I, I gotta talk with, to them. I fuck with Panzer and I fuck with Billy Perry too. Yeah, that's what I was you gonna know, ask. I, I, you you I, cool I, with them? I fuck with anybody, bro. I don't got hate for nobody. I don't got nothing against nobody. I don't give two fucks about anybody saying things bad about me or talking. You see what I mean? I got. I'm doing me. I'm happy with life right now. I don't really care about. Oh, I'm gonna try to get a sponsor. I'm 34 years old. Yeah. My goal is just to ride my bike right now, kill it for New York City. I have to ride for New York. I have to represent the city right now. I love that you because, still still going hard and still like have that motivation to ride. Because, dude, I can't even imagine if I rode since I was eight, went through all the shit that you went through. I don't know if I would still have the motivation to want to ride. You know, I admire that about you. Um, yeah, it, it, I, I appreciate you. Thank you for telling me that. I really do appreciate you. You know what it is, bro? I sat down and think in the crib in the dark sometimes writing raps. And I really, really think about it. I really think about bike riding. I love this shit out of bike riding. If I had to die on my bike, so be it. You know what I mean? If I fucking, you know, it's a, it's a lot of shit going on with bike riding. It's a lot of emotional shit. Like the same thing with Dave Remember killing himself. Yeah. You know? Same thing with Scotty Kramer hitting his head. And, you know, and he couldn't walk, but now he could walk. And he still rides his bike. And he's hosting all these fucking dope ass shows. Yeah, dude. And regardless of what happened to him, he's still pushing it. Bike riding is all about pushing yourself setting goals and you know believing in yourself and just being positive and having fun it's all about having fun at the end of the day yep dude seeing like scotty come back and then he pushes himself to like beat his time around the track like i don't know if you saw it but like he's he, i don't know he has some gopro on or something and you can hear him breathing heavy and he's just pumping through a pump track and like trying to beat the time that he set before and it's just like it's a beautiful thing because it is just progressing and like What's the speaking of progressing? What's the last thing that you progressed on? What's the last trick you learned, if any, or what's what's the last shit you uh, worked on? I don't know. I, yo, let me tell you something. I'm gonna tell you something. You're gonna laugh at this. I work two jobs. Right, I work seven days a week. I still come out here and ride my bike every day, even if for an hour or two. Like I can pull my bike out right now and do a hop whip or whatever, you know. But um, with progression wise, I can say. I haven't really even pushed myself. The pe people thinking, you see, people think my riding I did is crazy. Yes, it's crazy, but that's me riding through pain. That's not me riding for fun. That's me riding because at the end of the day, I have to brand myself because I represent the hood. I represent every other kid that don't have nothing, regardless of where they live at. They're just trying to push themselves and do something positive with their life. You know, in my mind, my name is Desmond Rose. My family whole tree line is fucked up. Nobody in my family got nothing 
to glorify or look back in the magazine or anything to glorify the name of the family tree. You know what I mean by that? Yeah. So I look at I look at it like I got to do this for myself and for what I believe in because I already won. Once I had the cover, boom. Once I jumped off the bridge and did the five forty, broke my bike, boom. Once I went to Mirror Crib, I was in the I was I was in the hood doing all the stuff. I was broke, so it's not like now where I got money. If I had to go fly out and have fun and ride and do shit the right way. Because the biggest factor when we was kids was, well, when I was a kid, I was broke. Animal was sending me to fucking California for seven days. I got $100 in my pocket. You know, it's no Uber Eats. It's no motherfucking, like, I could go to California and do Uber Eats on my BMX bike, make $150. I could survive, buy some weed tonight, you know. It, it was nothing like that. It was so no, tell like, me about that. How do you make $100 last seven days? What do you eat? What's a day in the life on a hundred dollar budget? Well, when I was when week? I was younger, I would buy I would buy peanut butter and jelly because you could buy peanut butter and jelly in a row. Smart. You could eat that for you could eat that for seven days. I would buy oatmeal, a pack of oatmeal. Mm -hmm. I would be, I, I would get um, I would get a cup of noodles, right? I would get a carton of motherfucking iced tea, so I always could make cold drinks, and uh, basically turkey and cheese. You know, I've been surviving for shit like that all my whole life. Hell yeah. Because I, I slept in Georgia. I slept in Georgia in my car for about a year and a half, bro. Like, after I had the cover, I had, like, a big downfall in my life. So I actually, like, was stressed out. And I just, like, jumped on a Greyhound with my crackhead-ass pops and went to Birmingham, Alabama for no apparent reason. And I went to Birmingham, Alabama. I'm out. I'm, like... 16 going on 17. I got no driver's license. I got no type of way of getting income. I just got my BMX bike pedaling through the woods. So I actually pedaled from like some town in Birmingham, Alabama to the fucking city. Met some BMX riders. The BMX riders knew who I was. They came and got me five hours, like three hours away from their town. And I rode with them for a while. And, you know, after that, my father was doing so much drugs and acting crazy. I had to just fucking... um get out that town so what i did was i stole the fucking car damn so i hop wait so, pause on that for a second tell me more about like when you say your crackhead dad was acting crazy what do you mean like my father was getting high sleeping with you know strippers and hoes at the hotel and i was just outside on my bmx bike and you know i'm not in new york was he bringing them around I, you like he's like hey son this nah, is nah. vanilla I'm already I already, I already passed. I already know what that is. You know what I mean? So I already left that alone. And my mind is already, let me just ride my bike and get away from the situation. Regardless of what I go through, let me hop on these pedals and pedal the fuck out of it. Something is better than a block. Something is better than a mile. That's how I look at life to this day. Regardless of what happens to me, regardless of what goes on. No I could just walk out the situation or pedal out the situation, drive out the situation. Everything is better once you leave the bad situation. Yeah. Facts. The biggest problem in life I see people live in the bad situations. And just Nobody really wants to grow or transfer or I can't, what's the word? Uh, to see their mind to bigger things. Yeah. Well, they have that. I feel like some people just don't even have like they don't even know that there is other shit out there. They're like, damn, this sucks, but that it is what it is, and they just kind of stay. Yeah, that's the sad thing about life. That's normal people. The people yeah. that ride BMX, you know, we know, we know, get the fuck out of here. I'm telling them, no, fuck you, bitch. I'm riding. <laughs> oh, fuck you. I'm riding, you know? What's it feel like to steal a car? Fuck, that's some GTA shit. Well, how, how did you do it? You want, me be, well, you want me to be very honest with you? Yes, sir. So basically, that's the first car I started driving. It was a 95. It was a 95 Ford Taurus. No, it was a 95 Crown Vic, all purple. Ooh, Crown Vic's drive nice, dude. Yeah. A box it was like Crown a Vic boat. Was my crown wig was fucked up. I had no line. <laughs> Axles, the wheels was just like this. And, you know, I didn't know how to drive. Let me tell you some crazy shit. My father took me to the bus station to go back to New York. I didn't want to go back to New York. I was trying to go see my aunt in motherfucking Florida. I mean, not Florida, Georgia. So, you know, the Crown Vicks, if you get a pair of vice grips and you clip the thing on a Crown Vic and you go like this, it breaks the ignition and the car starts right up. So long story short, the, on the yeah, fucking the, ignition hole, you don't even need keys. You just need to twist the whole shit. Yeah, the, the twist, you know, the, the old thing, the old circle thing like this. You twist yeah, the whole yeah. thing. Huh. So long story short, he, um... How'd you learn that? Like, bro, I know a lot of shit, bro. I know a lot of street shit, bro. Like, I don't, I don't... I really just learned it because I knew that the car key 
even when he pulled it out, the initiative was fucked up, and I could turn in and start it. That's how I really knew it, to be honest with you. Yeah. So I took the car. Birmingham, Alabama. Let's listen to me. I'm in Birmingham, Alabama. Right? I'm 17 years old. I got a driver's permit from New York that's all bitten up for my dog. I got my BMX bike. I got my dog in a car and a bag of clothes. I try to drive from Birmingham, Alabama to Georgia. Right? Me didn't know where I was going because, you know, I got shot with a paintball gun in my eye and my right eye was blind. Half the tricks you see me on Instagram, I mean, on Instagram, on um YouTube, I couldn't see it on my right eye. That's heavy. Yeah. But everybody's telling me I'm a sick rider, but nobody knows. Only people that know me in New York know I can't see on my right eye. I can yeah. see on my right eye now because it's blurry and I had motherfucking surgery. But I, my whole eye was great. When I went to Mirror Crib, my eye was great. When I 540 off that bridge, I couldn't even see spinning off the right. But let me stop hopping in, in our stories. But what I did was um, I hopped on the highway. I had $50 in my name. My black ass drove all the way to Mississippi by accident. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> so I, I wasted all my gas money. And I went to a gas station. And these fucking white guys chased the shit out of me, trying to beat me up. Or whatever the fuck they tried to do to me. But I got out of there with the car, got away. I hopped on the highway. I'm bumping 50 cent. I got a little blunt smoking. I don't know where I'm going because there's no GPS. It's only maps, you know, because it's back in the day. Yeah. So I'm driving, I'm driving. I pull over, ask somebody in the full directions, but it's already like two, three in the morning. So nobody's really outside down south at that time. So I'm driving, I'm driving. It's foggy. This fucking car got no brakes. The tires is all ripped up. I get pulled over by police. So I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. If I got to go to jail, fuck it. I go to jail. <laughs> You know what I mean? Because I'm young. So in my mind, I'm saying I'm 16, 17. How long can a nigga, how long can I be in jail for? You know, they're going to let me out eventually. Yeah. So if anything, I take a bus and try to get back to New York City or whatever. The cop pulled me over. Now, I guess because I was high, I pulled over on the highway, not the medium. You know, the medium is the on the other side of the line of the highway. Yeah. I left the car parked on the highway. <laughs> And I didn't notice that the cop let me go with a warning ticket. He said, you don't know where you're going? I was like, officer, my father's doing all this crazy stuff. I'm trying to get back to New York. I'm trying to get to my own house in Georgia. I don't know what I'm doing. I barely have gas money. The cop gave me $60 in gas and gave me a warning ticket. Damn. He had 10 cops over there. 10 cops. 10 Dude, cops on me. That's kind of awesome. Yeah, so I was shaking like a... I was I shaking like a bitch. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. But he gave you 60 bucks, and then you're on your way. He gave me sixty dollars and I was on my way. That's fire. Where'd you end up? Um, I and see, I you know, a lot of people that, that don't know me or the people that do know me, they're gonna say D Rose, black man is fucking blessed. Cause he get through shit and I don't know how he get through shit and he do shit that like like put it like this. I I I've been through a lot. Like right now, I can hop on my bike and over over grind a sixty steel handrail, thirty steel handrail, whatever, right? I haven't rolled all week. You know what I mean? But I, I probably landed first try, at least second try. It's just in my bloodline, the tricks is in it. So lately, you know, as I got older, I'm thinking, man, hey, fuck this bike shit. This shit ain't paying the bills, especially after I got arrested. I, I kind of wanted to give up on riding. But then I start looking at real life, and I'm like, this shit fucking sucks. <laughs> it sure does, dude. <laughs> this shit fucking sucks, bro. Like, if, if I'm that old, I'm not that old. Like, I still could kill it. You know, I still could, like, Come out here and practice. Yeah, I might not have health insurance as an adult. You know, we got to get health insurance now. We mm -hmm. got to grow up. We got to take care of everything. We got bills to pay. We got to work. All these things is just hitting you in the head with real life, which is sad, too, for a lot of kids that got like, you know, you know, I don't know people financially, but some people that got sponsored a lot. And now when they, as they got older, the checks don't come in no more. They're just sitting back fucked up in life because they're trying to figure out, oh, I got to find a job now. Yeah. Or instead of just like you should have worked from the beginning, so now if something happened, you know that I could just go to work. Yeah, I feel like it's smart to have. You can't. I mean, there's an argument to put all your eggs in the riding basket and just go balls all balls to the wall, like just relying on riding. But I think it's smart to like develop a life outside of BMX, like a skill that you're good at or a different career, but then keep riding at the same time. And that's like all the. All my favorite writers now all have, you know, jobs, but they still do it because they love it. That's the 
that's the unfortunate reality of it. Cause I don't think that like, I don't know, other industries you might be able to make a living, but even, I feel like everything's a grind, dude. Like, even if you wanted to be a pro basketball player, like there's only a select few that yeah, do it. Exactly. You could be a broke basketball player. That's like super good, real easy. Like it's hard no matter what industry you're in. Even just like think about YouTube, starting a YouTube channel and like hoping that that succeeds. You kind of still have to have your shit together and have a job to fund your like YouTube career, which is, and only a few make it, you know, Billy and Anthony, I think are the, the BMX examples of it. Um, yeah, but some of these, I think some of these kids' parents got money too on the low. Oh, for sure. You know? Yeah. And it's a, like me, a safety I net. I have that. Like my, I'd never felt the shit that you feel where it's like you have no safety net. Like you've literally a hundred dollars and that's it. Like I, I always had, like, I, I would get there to where I have a hundred dollars to stretch out, but I always had, I could call dad, you know, like, but you never had that. And that's fucking, I can't even imagine. Yeah, bro. Like, you know, when I had the cover, I went and showed my mother. I said, look, you told me, oh, stop riding that bike. You keep on getting hurt. You keep on da 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 You know, she was proud of me. She was like, oh, that's so cool. But, you know, then my stepfather bitch ass going to say, how much money you make? You didn't make how much money you make. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> how, much money, how much money you make? And I'm like, it's not about that. This shit just touch souls all around the world. It's true. It's a so, beautiful thing. So the only thing that's different from now and back in the day as adults, I, I I can say I don't know if all of us feel this way, but things was more valuable back in the day than today. You know, you can have a video part right now. You film that shit all year. You put it on YouTube. It might it, it might hit. It might not hit. Unless your name is buzzing and people really know you, then it's like when you post it, it's like okay, he's gonna do this. Like Dennis Ernestson. Shout out to Dennis Ernestson, bro. Fucking um. I hope I said his fucking name right. I know I said his name right. <laughs> no, you said people it wrong. About Danny, people are thinking about Danny, C, Danny Hickerson. What the Danny, fuck his name er, right? What'd you say? You said Dennis Ernison. I was just going to let it slide. It's Ernison. Yeah, well, that's my that's my, that's, that's my boy. Him and Chad Curley, bro. You know? Yeah, they're killing like, they're big time. I know they both got kids. Shout out to the babies, man. Shout out mm -hmm. to the babies. When are you going to have a kid? Listen, my dick don't work. But nah, I'm <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm not. I'm not having no baby with these girls in New York. See, California is different. Yeah, get out there, man. Go have a California kid. Look, Yo, raise, raise a little hippie black black kid. I, nah, I say I'm black, not... not like a racist thing. Just black nah, man's nah, kid. No. I, don't, I don't. I don't look at it like that. I don't look at it like that. You know what it is, bro? I have to do something with this bike still, and I gotta <laughs> do what I have to do. I start worrying about that stuff because I mean, I had a, I had I had a couple of bad relationships, you know. Yeah. And That's I think I'm you. trying to find comfort in the female more because I never had comfort in myself as, a, as in life. And that's a bad thing because you find comfort in the wrong girl. And as you get older, you don't understand these bitches is crazy to you about 30 years old, 32, mm -hmm. 31. You might understand at 25, but she might let it slide because the coochie, you know? You might, oh, fuck it. Or she might suck you off all day and push you to sleep and then go through your fucking phone and scream at you for no reason. <laughs> so these girls, that's why I added 22 out here. Not in of being a porno star. I'm not mad at the dude. I respect it because Adam is a real hustler. Adam goes from this is working. Oh, that's not working. I'm going over here. This is working. He always been motivated to push the scene. People talk shit about Adam regardless of what. Every time I see Adam, he showed me love. Adam always showed me love. So even when I was a kid, even when I was a badass kid, he let black back to hood. And then I see him older, interviewing all the hood kids. It's like, it's crazy, but really it's not because he just adapted to what he didn't really know was going to happen back in the day. Yeah. We all rode bikes and we all rode street and we all we all try to progress our mindset to be bigger and make things out of ourselves. Some people was lucky. Some people was bad. Some people didn't make it. Adam went to Cal. He blew. He New York City had 20 inch NYC, right? And after 20 inch NYC. You had to come up. Now, the come up is a fucking blog before the Instagram even came out that we could look at. Oh, this kid wrote today. This kid did this. Oh, this kid got an interview. You know, Scavenger and Bike Riding was dope, but Animal and shit like that, they never pushed the profile of the rider. They never pushed, oh, we're going to block this kid every week. He did this this week or did this. Or Scavenger didn't really push how to, you know, a blog. They pushed the riders and the product more than a blog when really, People want to see your personality. People want to know who you really are as a person. People yeah. want to know. People want to know how the fuck, how the fuck can I give you twenty dollars? You know, like it's it's that simple right now on the phone. Yeah, dude. And I, phone, Adam touched on that. He was talking about like he realized like it's more than just writing. It's a lot of personality too, and the shift. 
like the come up was huge because it was ahead of its time as far as like people wanting to see what's going on and as a, that was a whole era dude it was awesome and yeah dude the adam shit like you're touching on him like the backlash i've gotten from people just messaging me with the strongest opinions about him who have never met him is wild like the, they but that, they that comes with being at if you get to that level dude like half and half hate love like this it is what it is the people that's let me tell you something the people that's mad and hating is the people that's mad they broke adam do what the fuck he want he a grown-ass man he gets paid to do what he lives he gets paid to do what he loves in life and that's all mm -hmm. that matters he showed everybody respect everybody you know what i mean he touched down and gave everybody they they they, they shake in hand and said i got you man you know what I mean? Adam, I met Adam last summer. He said, "Well, whoop, he gave me a hug. Oh, what up, black man? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't ask Adam for nothing. You know, I'm a rapper. I don't say Adam put me on the come up because at the end of the day, I know him. So if I see him, I'm gonna hear a song or whatever. He gonna listen to it regardless. I'm not gonna push it on him because he got everybody else doing that. But I know deep down the side, same way he know you, he know me. You know, we're the, we're the, we're the real fan base. We're the real number one fans. We're the riders. Yes, so sir. he always gonna look out for the riders because he's, he's a rider. Yeah, it's wild to like. He was so stoked to talk about BMX too. Like you could tell, like he doesn't talk about it with anybody now because he's in that whole different world. So we're we're still BMX, baby. To be honest with you, to come up, to come up, stop BMX, stop. To come up, post some shit this whole this whole month, twenty twenty four. I bet you should change. Yeah, you know what I mean. You just need somebody. Well, their Instagram's still please. going, right? Yeah, the Instagram still come up. Then we got the other one. What's the other one called? BMX. Uh, yeah, at BMX. Yeah, at BMX, they, they just posted Nigel doing that bum ass line in the skate park. <laughs> it was see. trash. Let's see. We got Dig BMX, we got BMX, and uh, the Come Up. That's still the main three. Like, even when the Come Up was a thing, like Dig BMX was a thing and Ride BMX was a thing. Then the Ride BMX. The, I think the Lucky is work for a Dig or something like that. I don't know, yeah, really. I think the Lucky's Dig. I don't know for sure. I think the Lucky might have been, I don't know. I'd have to ask him, but I feel like. All photographers had their feet, their like hands in multiple buckets, like they could sell to different magazines if they needed to. Let's look for this Nigel line. There he is. Like, you know, um, the the best thing right now, yeah. Look at that bum ass clip. You can't you can't do a feeble three sixty in twenty twenty four. You tripping, dude? That's a good clip. Nigel looks nah, good on the bike, dude. I like that's watching a, Nigel. That's, that's, that's a bullshit ass clip. <laughs> you know what I mean? Why? You got <laughs> Let me tell you something. Because feeble three. Let me tell you something. Tell me. If I had all the sponsors in the fucking world. What would you do? If I had all the sponsors in the fucking world, I'd jump off a fucking building. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's, it's different. Like, well, you're jumping off a building and you don't have all the sponsors in the world. I just watched you King of New York shit. Imagine if I was getting the, the chicken or I had the money to go on the trip. Imagine if I had Nike give me a shoe. You think I'll be doing the same Boston for the past 15 years? Me, I'm a real rider, bro. Yep. I'm a real rider in my heart. Like, I do this shit for my heart. I don't give a fuck about no sponsor. I don't give a fuck about who thinks I'm nice or who thinks I'm fly or who thinks I'm cute or who thinks my sneakers is cool. You know, because right now, it's a totally different industry. Your progression got to be up with the industry. A feeble 360 for somebody that got all the sponsors, to me, is trash. It should be a feeble truck. Uh, 180 crooked half cat bar or something. I don't know. It should yeah. be more fight. You see Casey Sterling? Dude, Casey Sterling. You know, you know how proud I am of Casey Sterling because you know what God's the what? Sterling or Casey Sterling? Sterling. Star, I, I call him Sterling because he's Sterling on the ball. <laughs> so, I, so, you know, it's the same thing with Harrison. You know yeah. what I mean? Those boys Jersey are nice. Right now is fucking, Jersey, right, Jersey right now is fucking up the East Coast. Now, New York, we got some we got some killers. You know, we got Ralph. We got Davey the Great. You know, we got, we got, um, we got we got kids coming up in New York City. I'm trying to come up, you know. But we got I got kids. I can tell that oh they you know they got their little swagger with their tricks, you know. Tell me who to follow. That's say, something I want to ask you. Like, give me a just name a few New York young kids that I don't know about that I should. All right, I'm, I'll name a few because you know they're gonna be like, oh, oh, black, black can't say my name. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, have, I'm a, their I'm voice a, hasn't I'm, changed yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, black I'm, 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 I'm gonna be totally honest. First text person I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say Ralph Hood Happy. Ralph is my best friend. He gets a little drunk and he had a little accents with his 
his alcoholic problems. You know, we got friends like that. We was talking about all day. We got. We need to be better friends and tell our friends to stop drinking. How do you spell no. Ralph Hood Happy? I think he got that overdose Ralph. Overdose Ralph. Yep. Oh shit! I'm already following Ralph. Yeah, we got overdose Ralph, right? Yep. We got motherfucking um. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you, let me tell you a real big story that nobody got. I'm gonna I'm gonna speak on this kid too. He's from Jersey. Um, I can't believe I know this fucking name. My man George. My young boy George is is um. Uh, what the fuck is his father? What's his father name again, man? Um, George is what's the name's father from that used to ride from Animal. What the fuck is his father name again? I'm damn son. I got I know too many people who don't fuck people names no more. <laughs> Who's but this anyway, George? man, he's what's the name's son, bro? They used to ride for Animal back in the day. Um, dude, people know the answer that are listening right now, and they're screaming it. I, f- I feel I have a vague what? idea of what you're talking about, but I don't know. George, um, what the fuck? God damn, D Rose. Um, I keep on thinking about guns. <clears throat> it's not guns. It's fucking um. It's with a G though. It's fucking um. As if I can Google it. I can't Google it. <laughs> well, anyway, fuck. Oh, I know man. exactly. I I have the same. I know what you're talking about. I yeah, do. You know what I'm talking about, bro. You got the yeah. bike shop in Jersey. You know what I'm talking about? Bro, is- that's going to piss me off. I know exactly what you're talking about. That's going to piss me the fuck off, Because I've seen Father Son, too, and they're nice. Fuck, dude. <clears throat> what the fuck is your name? I got I got to I got to phone a friend real quick. I'm trying to... <sighs> I'm going to call Clay Johnson. He'll know. Oops. Not Cleon. It could be the weed, you know. It could be the weed. <laughs> All right, we're phoning a friend. We're gonna figure out this father, father son thing. God damn it! Is that Grimaldo? Grimaldo. Yeah, George George Grimaldo, Grimaldo and George Durant. George Grimaldo. Yes, That's George it. Grimaldo's son George Durant is nasty, and I love him. I'm talking so to black man right because... now, and I I needed your help to figure out the father son Grimaldos, but I forget we figured it out. We we just sat sat and couldn't remember uh, what the father son combo was. So, say hi. What's cracking, black man? Yeah, what's good, bro, bro? How you been, man? He said, what's good, bro, bro? How you been, man? I'm good, I'm good. I'm driving up north right now. All right, have a, have a good one. Good. Yeah, have a safe trip. Watch out, watch out for the police. <laughs> All right, but... All right, we figured it out. <laughs> Grimaldo. Yeah, so Grimaldo, that's, what, that's, that's, that's something I Durant? love, too, you know? But somebody have a fucking son, and the sun rise with the pops, like, that's back in the day shit. You don't really see that that much. Yeah, George Duran. I think I follow George Duran. Yeah. No, I don't. About time. It's funny, I knew who he was, but didn't follow. All right, next up. Uh, <laughs> that, that was such a brain fart, dude. <laughs> fucking... We got, we got, we got, we got, uh, I'm gonna say we got bitch ass Marcus. You know, B- bitch ass Marcus, bitch ass Marcus. I fuck with Marcus. I just, I think his style is just a little weird, you know. But he, 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 he rides pretty decent. He does a little thing. What's his? Uh, we got, uh, what's his Instagram? Do you know? I don't. It's Marcus something. I don't know. But we got um. Nah. Fuck it. Tag him in the comments. Man, fuck- And oh my god, he's fucking stop fucking calling me. I'm on a fucking voice call, man. <laughs> put it put it on do not disturb. All right, well, shout out to bitch ass Marcus, whoever Marcus is. So. And um we got we got we got Davey from the BX, you heard? Davey. I think it's I think it's Davy the Great. Yeah, you mentioned him. Let's see, Davy the Great. Mm, I don't know if that's him. 
It's Dev the Great or something like that. Oh yeah, 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 I know Dev. Dev the Great. He got a he got a real he got a real rugged New York style. You know. Yes, Dev the Great. He's learning his ways. Yeah. I be trying to school. I be trying to school him. Well, not on this ride. I let him do ride. I ain't trying to school nobody on their fucking bike ride. Ride your bike how you want to ride. But I will try to school y'all on life. Told y'all motherfuckers get a minivan, get a job, get this money, get a cargo van, get this money. Stop playing. Who else I got? Um, we got this young kid from Jersey. His name's Terrence. He's pretty cool. You know, he's from Jersey. Um, but New York wise. Shit, I would just say we got Ralph and, and Dave and Dev right now because they've been filming a lot for the AMP video. They've been filming a lot for the AMP video. They got a video part coming out. Terrence Bikes um, from New Jersey. Now I follow Terrence. Shout out Terrence. Sick. And then, um, uh, and then, then we yeah. got, uh, let, me say, let, me say, let me think, let me think. Who else I got that's pretty dope? You know, it's this kid. He got braids. I don't know his fucking name, but he's rides with Queens. I see him do a grind, a switch with. I mean, grind the whip down a rail, like a little rail. He got his little tricks. So I'm not going. I'm not even going to be a. I'm going to be a real New Yorker. All right. So we got we got Jose. Shout out to Jose. Jose just had a baby. You know, Jose is pretty sick. I knew Jose since I was a little kid. He's pretty. He's pretty dope. He don't really ride that much right now, but I'm gonna shout him out. Um. Who the fuck else? I'm really thinking. Cause niggas ain't really riding no more, bro. You know what I mean? Like people riding, but people ain't riding. Yeah. What we got. It's a tough one. It's a like. Yo, we got this one kid named Julian. He's pretty dope too. What's uh? What's his Instagram? I don't, I don't know what's Instagram. But shout out Julian. I you know his last name? I don't know, I don't know. I don't know how you got it though. You know his or you know his last name? No. Nah. Nah, just he's fucking Julian. He, <laughs> shout he, out he, Julian. He do like he do like he do nolly balls and stuff like that. Okay, pretty dope. Dude. I'm gonna shout him out too because he had a bad accident not too long ago. Oh shit! And he just came back into Toronto, so he's he's been killing shit too. You know, who else I got? Um, oh, well, I was I would say the uh, the shit life too. Oh, but you know, the shit yeah. life. Everybody know about you telling me new guys, so that's why I ain't really. You yeah. know, but shout out to the shit life. Shout out to the shit life too. Shout out to Melzaro. Shout out to Tyrone the shop. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm a, you know, but what else? Uh, but besides that, that's the only little kids. That's the only people. The real young people that's riding right now, I've been seeing riding is is Ralph and Dev. They've been they've been killing shit, bro. Yeah, I've been watching Dev they've for been, a minute they, too. Yeah, they got a whole video part with Joey for the MP video. Sick, you know that'll be dope. So, Man, shout I'm out to Joey. Type. Yeah, shout out to Joey, bro. He's a teacher, right? Yeah, he he he's special way. I think he's teach special way. That's Cause you know I'm special wear too, <laughs> so he's so. good around you. He's... Hello, Desmond. How are you today, son? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um. Well, fuck right. you know, who else? No, that's good. You gave me plenty right there, and I actually I feel good that I was following a couple of them already. I'm trying to I'm trying to really think, so I'm not missing no. Oh 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 oh. I'm about to say this because he. Bitch ass Noja. It's another kid named Noja. He crip or something like that. He think he a gang member, you bitch ass nigga. <laughs> but Noja is pretty dope too. And Joey used to teach no- Noja in school. And Noja is riding. Noja is pretty nice too. He he know. But these kids don't really got nobody. How you spell you know. Noja? Noja. It's like no jumper. But it's like Noja. Like I don't, I don't know. K N O J A H. Noja. His Instagram is not really lit. He doesn't really got a high profile Instagram, but he's a dope rider. Cool. He's a dope rider. I'm trying to really think. Bitch ass I'm, trying no really think. <laughs> I'm trying to really think who else be. It's my other man's, right? He rides for FedEx. And, I, and the other kid from. It's the, I'm, I'm going to do this quick because I don't want to hear these niggas. Oh, he ain't listen to me. He ain't <laughs> yeah. mention me. Listen me. They be crying. Hit him with it. it he rides from Mezzaro. He's pretty good. He, he works for UPS. You know what the fuck I'm saying? I don't, I don't remember your name at this fucking moment. It's my other man. He be riding in Jersey. He be killing shit too. He be with Harrison and him. I forgot his fucking name. I'm sorry I ain't got that nigga's name, but I ain't shot girlfriends. So, but Har- and Harrison and Casey. Harrison and Casey, dude. They're worldwide. Harrison and Casey. So fucking good. Yeah, Harrison's sick, bro. Casey's mm-hmm. sick. Jersey always got good riders, bro. 
For real. See, New York is kind of a little different. Jersey, because Jersey got more unity. You know what I mean? So Jersey always going to work. New York is always. Why do you think it's like that? It's just, this, it's just New York City, bro. New York City is just, if you know, as I get older, it's fucking, you know, it's fucking great me out here, bro. My fuck's look at you. What the fuck you looking at? Oh, you stepped on my sneakers. Oh, da -da. oh, bitch. Fuck. It's just, it's just. Doggy dog. Nah, nah, it's not doggy dog. It's more like roach stop on roach. I'm going to say it like that. Oof. It's like everybody's trying to stop on you in this fucking city. You know what I mean? Either the police, parents, work, life, the car down the street, you crossing the street, whatever. It's just, everything is just trying to stop on you in the city, you know? Yeah. Man, I've been there and it's just so many fucking people, dude, packed into the tightest spot. It's wild. It's a totally different way of living compared to pretty much anywhere else. It's wild. Yeah, for real. But since COVID happened, bro, you know, sh you know, as we get older, you know, with the real world, COVID, if you got vaccinated, it's stupid. <laughs> oh my God, let's go. <laughs> you know, because I don't need them, them, them bots in me, baby boy. Yes, sir. Hell yeah, I'm glad to hear that. I did. I remember the fucking push to get vaccinated was so heavy, but I didn't. And it, I'm so glad I didn't. Cause like, dude, if you didn't, the social pressure was like, you piece of shit. You want to kill grandparents? Like, just like, nah, but I don't want a vaccine. I remember they were saying that shit. Like you telling me I'm going to kill somebody cause I didn't get a needle that yeah. you don't want me. And she did the bad thing. Let me tell you something. I've been trying to be social media. I said this year, fuck it. I'm just going to go in here. I'm going to start talking. Hella shit and doing hella tricks. I'm going to do it. Because the past three years, I didn't want to do it. Because it's like, if I don't got my money right, I'm not going to be coming out here. Everybody know I could do tricks. Everybody know I'm nice. Everybody know I'm sick. But what can I have as a product I could give to you that you can hold in your pocket? Right. That next year, you'd be like, oh, shit, I still got this. Black man gave it to me. Oh, I still got this. I bought this, you know? That's what it comes down to. See, a lot of people, that's why I said, I can't even put that. I'm going to say it anyway. It's like the it's like the um the Jordan effect or the Kobe effect or like the Adam Twenty Two effect. Nobody knows what I mean by that, but if you really think about it, you see somebody that tries something, push the shit out they self, and they succeeded so much more, and what they thought they could do, and what they couldn't do. Same yep. thing with football play. Same thing with the kid in high school that you said, oh, this motherfucker, he ain't gonna go to NBA. He ain't nice. You push him down so much where he just pushed through the fucking wall and exploded. That's how it goes. So he's like, so that's how it goes. And some people get put on real easy and they just don't progress through the whole situation. They're blessed with everything, but they don't progress. It's the same old, same old, same old, same old. Yeah. I mean, there's something to that, that just that mindset of like knowing that no matter how much shit you get put on you or whatever external things, like if you keep going, something's there. Like I've, I've seen this like picture where it's a minor, or like a, a guy like, hacking through a cave it's like a little cartoon and like he gives up at when there's only like this much left for him to go because you never know like how much further you have to just keep grinding and pushing until finally it's like ah. but even then when you get to the ah moment you just have to keep on doing the thing like i've seen successful people that the reason they're successful is because they won't stop and so even though like all the money in the world all the success in the world they just wake up and they're addicted to the grind the hustle and i think uh that's that's what you got in you, which is cool. So you were saying 2024, you're going to be doing a lot of social media and put yourself out there talking shit, riding bikes, and then eventually you're going to have shoes to sell. You're going to what what else is on the on the agenda? Have you thought a lot about this coming year? Well, I thought about every year, like every other year, just push myself more and more. But this year, I kind of want to ride more because I rode last year. I rode a lot, but you know, like. You know, I still go through things in real in the real in the real world, and I feel like okay, I could jump down these thirty stairs or fifty stairs. I could do this, I could do that, but where's my product? Where's the product for New York of bike riding? Like somebody right now, like that's the same thing I said. Nigel's a bitch ass nigga. I, I'm not gonna dick ride. I'm not gonna sit here and say, oh, they're gonna say, oh, he's hating. I'm not gonna say that. I'm being real. These kids in New York City, right? He ain't helping nobody. He ain't putting nobody on. Let me tell you some other bitch ass shit. Yeah, he is. He's he's helping fools and he's doing that shit with Listen, financial. Nah, I'm talking about New York City. I'm talking about New York City. He's I know putting, what he did. He's not helping kids out in New York City. No, nah, he. I I ain't see nobody get helped out. Maybe back in it, nobody getting helped out. Right now, this year, last year, I didn't see nothing. Yeah. 
What do you, you when you I mean? say you want to push yourself for 2024, what do you mean specifically? Because like you said, it's just like every other year, I'm going to keep pushing myself. But what does that mean? Well, what I mean is this. I'd rather show than talk. You see, I got the sneaker. The sneaker right there to everybody. See, I was telling people, a sneaker, right? Everybody got their own sneaker. Not everybody got their own sneakers. People got a sneaker colorway, their name on a shoe. But who's really going to put their money up to make their own shoe and really try to push it? Even if I sold 50 pairs, 100 pairs, it's still a start. Yeah. If I have my sneaker right now, the D-Rose 45 sneaker, and I put that shit on my feet and, and go ride it right now and film, it's totally different. Because now, you see that sneaker on my feet when I ride. So now you're like, shit, I need those. What the fuck are those? I don't even... How he made those sneakers? Because nobody makes sneakers. It's the same thing with Yeezys. When Yeezy make a shoe, everybody want them. When somebody make a shoe, everybody want them. Somebody got a colorway, they're going to buy them. But it's really not... It ain't like this can. You know what I mean? You need something from me that you could grab like this can in your house. Yeah, exactly. And that's kind of what the whole name of the fucking BMX industry is. It's all like you become a billboard for other people's shit that they're selling and then they pay you in in exchange for that. And like at this point in time, it's like instead of going to find a sponsor, making your own shit, make your own shoe. And then you are you're doing it for a reason. You're jumping off a 30 stair, like you said, like and it's not just for the glory of it on Instagram. It's like, what are those shoes? What are those? I think that's smart, dude. How much money did you have to put down to get the mold going? Like what type uh, of investment are we talking to get a shoe going? I don't and know, how did you get the plug? I, I'm in the streets. You know, what I mean? that's the difference for me and You're literally else. just talking to people on the street. Like, do you got a connection for shoemaking in China? Like, what the fuck? Let me, let me tell you something. You see this phone? This phone is like a pack of crack. The this phone, phone is, is magical, flip, dude. Flip, flip, flip. How much money is motherfuckers making off this fucking phone we pay monthly for? Everybody's making fucking money off this fucking phone. For real. So that's why I told myself, I said, listen, let me fall back. Let me save up. Let me organize shit the right way. So when I do make the move, I make the move the right way. Even if I just made 10 pairs of sneakers, just 10. Somebody out this motherfucker's going to buy those. I, I need these sneakers. These are those sneakers that he did, 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 did this way or did, did this with it. You know? Yeah. And that's what I mean by like a lot of people don't, a lot of people want this. They want that grab. But when they get it, they don't know how to really move it. Yep. I can't be more for myself. To be better, you know? Like, how can we market ourselves to have a product that everybody wants? Have you tried, like you mentioned, everybody's making money off the phone. Have you tried anything else besides this shoe idea? Like, to make money off the phone? Uh, well, be honest with you, shit, you got a phone, you go Craigslist, you can buy a car, you can find a job, work everything off the phone. That's what I mean. Like, if you have money enough to buy a cell phone right now, put it like this. Say if I had, I got $500. Matter of fact, I'm gonna show you. I'm, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do it the whole happy way. I got a hundred dollars cash. I can spend this shit by weed. I can spend it on food, or I can take this hundred dollars right now. Twenty twenty four. I go to a smoke shop. I don't mean to. I don't mean to say this to anybody else. I'm just saying options. It's just, there's a lot of ways you can make a hundred dollars to two hundred to three hundred dollars. You can buy an ounce of weed, sixty dollars. You sell all the eggs for twenty five dollars. You make two hundred dollars or whatever. One fifty profit. Make your money back. Do the same thing again. Get the flow up. You get five hundred dollars. You motherfucking buy a van. You find a job doing deliveries. The van you pay eight hundred dollars for thousand dollars whatever. It's making eight hundred dollars a week now. That's four thousand dollars a month off of you spending your money off a thousand dollars. So basically, it's a lot of things you could do. You could go motherfucking pack bags in a grocery store. Get you a hundred dollars. You could right now. You could go, if I was anybody right now and I was broke, let me tell you the first thing I would do. I would come out of the house, I would find a skateboard, a scooter, a bike. I would do Uber Eats. Uber Eats will give you money the same day. In this era of world, you can't be broke, you can't be hungry. Even though we are sometimes, people's broke, people's hungry. But if you really go outside and try to itch your toe and hustle, it's going to come right to you, bro. And that's where I'm at right now. I hustle so much, my mindset is like, okay. I could post on Instagram and get 10,000 views off a trick, but how can I have 10,000 people or just 1,000 people, 500 people buy something with this amount of money that I can make this money? Now, it's not all about the money, but it is all about the money. Yeah. You know what I mean by that? Because yeah. without money, you can't survive. I can't feed you. I can't do this interview. We don't got internet. We got to pay bills as an adult. So some kids are telling me, 
oh, it's not about the money. I'm just going to ride. And this, it's not like that no more. You don't have Robbie and Max coming out here taking pictures of kids. You don't have Dig Magazine out here like back in the day taking pictures of kids. You don't really have no magazine. You don't really have nobody to grab the kids and push them to be something greater. Because right now with the cell phone, you could be great today. Big time. That's and, and people, wild how people, that shit's changed. And people don't understand that. And people don't realize that. That's why I tell people right now, get you a job, two jobs, save your money, and push your brand. Push yourself. Because at the end of the day, people that really like you is going to buy your product. People's going to tune in. And right now with this phone, it's scary because, you know, some people can't handle this phone. Some people can't handle comments. Or some people can't handle saying, oh, he said this, he said that on the, on the cell phone. It's at the same time, it's good, but it's dangerous. It's it's wild because it's like a, it doesn't feel real. Like it feels real, the internet in general. Like I was talking to Adam about this. It's just like, there's a separation. You have to have like your real life, get your shit together. But then like the internet, you can handle whatever comes your way. Like it's not even like nobody's coming up to you on the street talking shit to your face. It's just comments on the internet that it's wild. Um, but you mentioned the like industry is different now. And I agree like the, it's, there's no magazines, there's no photographers coming out to push you. It's all kind of all, all up to your own. What do you think is the equivalent? Cause like the ride BMX cover you got was huge, but that's because magazines were big and that was like how we consumed media. What do you think is the equivalent to getting a magazine cover today? It's not the same effect because you know why? Because the magazine you had in your hand. Right now, you get a magazine cover. Somebody see it on their phone. And they go, "Okay, I ain't got to buy this shit. I synced it. I open the yeah, whole keeps, magazine up. I'm scrolling. scrolling already. Yeah, I keep scrolling. That's it. Nobody really has. Nobody has art. You no. Know, nobody has. The That's what I'm saying, games. though. Like the impact. What What could somebody do today that would have the same impact? I don't know. I don't even know the fucking answer. Like if you, you ask know me what that I, shit, well, I wouldn't know either. A lot of things. Look, 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 look at Adam. Adam doing porn. You know why everybody Adam doing fucking porn? Because every male in America jerked the fuck off eighty percent of the day, regardless of what you know. Yeah. Pause. Well, it's true. Everything right now, you look on your phone, nothing but booty cheeks. It's so much girls bending over, look like they all taking shits every fucking day. <laughs> and it, 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 it's different, bro. Like, you, we went from, oh, a bitch sent me a little boob pic to, oh, the bitch got her titties out today. You know? Yeah. It's just normal. You went, that's, you went from that's seeing light. a chick. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You went from seeing a chick cute to now a bitch whole body out. You got kids 10 years old seeing twerk videos. It's yeah, different. Dude. It's not I like, can't even imagine, dude. <laughs> it's crazy. Imagine going to school right now with the way the phone is. Yeah. Shit. Because back in the day, I told my homeboy, you was a, oh, he's a bitch. Oh, fuck him. Uh, uh. Now with the cell phone, yo, fuck you, nigga. I'm on hallway four. <laughs> I'm on hallway five. I'm going to fuck you up. I'm on the third floor. So it's like the phone is more dangerous. The phone is dangerous than the gun. The phone is the most, and the police locking everybody up. On his motherfucking phone. Like, you know, I like rap music, right? I love rap music, but sometimes I feel like, yeah, maybe I'm too tough or too too great gangster with it, but I don't want to talk. I'm not killing nobody. I ain't going to say, oh, I shot somebody because I didn't, but you know. But that, that's what they programming young black males to think that's good, you know? Yeah. So the bigger picture is how can we push? Uh, my bigger picture is this. How can I show my, my people there's a better way in life and then the struggle? Chase your dreams. I got to make it. Even though I made it, I just got to, like, in my mind, I'm just riding my bike right now for New York. I got to do something for New York City, bro. Because New York City right now is dry. You know, kids is doing shit, but, like, who's going to put the impact? Like, oh. Yeah. You know, like, who's going to, who's going to. And on that note, like, to... you put on the Hood Happy. I mean, I'm sure, I think you, it was, like, in partnership with Steve, but. Uh, peep game, hood happy jam that looked sick. Like just jams, I think is huge. I wanna, I wanna put some nah, jams I, together. I but... my, my friend was talking about that shit too. But you know what the difference is now? And hmm. then before I got, I got a little bit of money, bro. I go to work. Like I work my ass off, bro. Like I do? work. I work. Um, I'm a delivery driver. You know, I got a couple of. I ain't gonna put, but I I do deliveries. That's what I. That's how I make money. I got nice. a couple of vans. I work that way. That's the only way you really can make money in New York anyway. There's really hey, no jobs got, out here. You said you got two jobs. Delivery yeah. and then anything else? Just deliveries. I, I do, do deliveries for two different companies. Nice. Yeah. I, I was trying to do the I was trying to do the box truck shit because the box truck shit you can make five thousand, ten thousand, you know? Or like oh like you no, know, at least four thousand, two thousand. So it's like 
But then I learned how to make two thousand, three thousand with a with a fucking minivan or a cargo van too. So at the same time, you know, I just probably bounce around from companies and do deliveries. Nice. You know, but but I make enough bread that I can fucking do what I gotta do, you know? Yeah. And basically you gotta you just gotta save. You just gotta save, bro. You gotta figure out what you wanna do with life. Everybody have their own goals, everybody had their own situations, and everybody you know, want to push themselves to be better. And some people just happy with what they got. Some people happy with crumbs. Some people happy with nothing. Some people happy with everything. So, to be honest with you. And some people are miserable even though they got everything. <laughs> you know, happiness doesn't come from. Yeah. Got, I mean, money gotta, can money doesn't buy you happiness, but it sure does buy you a little bit. You know, it does. It does nah, something. nah, that's, that's, that's <laughs> a fucking lot. Money buy you fucking happiness. You crazy? <laughs> yeah, but you ever you ever you ever go out with a chick with a fat ass or she real pretty? And you have fifty dollars, and the bitch wanted something. It was like a hundred. He was like, "Damn, if I maybe if I had the hundred, she'd have gave the coochie up." But then you lost her because you was broke. Yep. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like, oh, like oh, you fucking um, I don't know, like money bring you happiness, bro. Because yeah. I'm telling you, I've been broke my whole life, and there ain't nothing, there ain't no worse feeling than having your stomach to your ribs and you fucking hungry, bro. Feeling like you gotta or steal something, or feeling like you gotta do this to eat. Or survive, you know, and that's how I grew up, and that's that's why now, as I get old, as as, I, as I'm older, I look back at everything I did in life, and I study this shit, and I go, okay, it's good this perspective, life is a game. Dude. You're doing good, you're doing fine. How is uh, how's your health? Yeah, I think you mentioned before we started recording, you want to work on your fitness. Well, I'm like two fifteen right now. I'm you still. I'm, I think my well, to be honest with you, half these motherfuckers looking older than me. You know, like motherfuckers looking fucked up. You see these motherfuckers out here? Yeah. People 30. looking fucked up out here. I don't know if it's the cigarettes. I don't know if it's the fentanyl. I don't know if it's the cocaine at these motherfuckers. I don't know what's going on in the world. I don't do drugs. I smoke a little bit of weed. I go to work and I ride my bike. I don't Has it always been that way? Did you, like, I was I was thinking about that actually when you were talking about crackhead dad. Like, does that steer immediately, like, push you away from ever doing drugs? Or did you have a period where definitely, you did them? Definitely. I never... I never did no cocaine. I think I took mushrooms when I was a kid, but I never, I don't fuck with shit like that, bro. Good for you. That's and my cool. heart is too many crackheads to even think about doing some shit like that, you know? Yeah. I know kids do it. I don't know what motherfuckers do, but I'm just saying, in the world, it's fucked up out here. Yeah. And all they promote is drugs, violence, and fucking murder, basically on this fucking phone every day anyway, and positive shit on the back end. When you really look for it, you find a positivity shit, but it's like, these times is crazy, bro. For real. This wild world we're living in. Like, even, I mean, Scary, bro. I don't know when the Molly Percocet song came out, came out, but that shit was, like, just fucking just blatant. All right, cool. This is one of the biggest hits in the country, just talking about drugs, literally. And then the Xanax craze and fentanyl's out of control. It's a, it's a wild world. Yeah, the and that's, like, just the way that the bike was your escape, like, that's some people's escape, even though they don't the realize it's a, it's a trap. The know? drugs they escape, bro. Right? Yeah. Because the drugs feel good for a little bit, and then all next thing you know, you're fucking stuck in this hole, and you have to find the drugs to feel normal. Ugh. No, um, that's why you gotta just be careful. You gotta have a strong mind out here in the street, especially with COVID. COVID fucks people up. Yeah, it did. COVID fucks shit up. It stops shit. It scared people. Motherfuckers didn't come outside. Like New York City was a ghost town. Like I, yeah, I came out of, I think I came out of jail, and then four days later, the lockdown happened. That's bro. good timing. That would suck to be in jail during the lockdown. That's yeah. scary, bro. You probably scary. rode. How was it riding with the empty streets? It was dope riding with the empty street, but you know what was mad scary? The first month, motherfuckers thought that shit was real. Like, second month, maybe. People thought it was real. Some people thought, nah, they trying to do something. I was scared but at the beginning, dude. That was, I was kind of I was, I was kind of shook, too. But the, what, I was more scared that nobody could go to work and get money. That's what I was scared about. Yeah, shit. I mean, the lockdowns, I think, did more damage than the actual virus, but I mean, that's when a whole went, different When you went to the grocery store, it was no food? Did you have, did you experience that? Yeah. Well, like, going to the grocery for store, me, it was all like, the, not all food the was there, out. but fucking toilet paper was gone. Like, it was the weirdest shit that people were, like, hoarding toilet paper, dude. That was so weird. That's what I'm trying to figure. Wipe your ass with a rag. You don't need to <laughs> yeah, like, understand that shit. Oh, shit, the world's ending. I better get a bunch of toilet paper. It's like, what, dude? Um, anyway. Let's see. We've been talking for a minute. Um, I want to know who's who's your favorite filmer that you've worked with, and then also just to watch. 
Shit, really, I don't got no fucking film. That's my biggest problem. If somebody want to film D-Rose 45, kill it, let me know. I pay you $1,000, 500 I don't have a fucking film. That's my biggest problem. You know, Joey films. I like how Joey films. But I don't yeah, have a nice. film, bro. I wake up 7 in the morning. I'm outside on my bike 8 o'clock in the morning like it's a fucking job. But I don't have no fucking film. And I'm not going to come out here. I'm going to have to eventually. But I'm about to come out here. But I'm just saying, I need a film. He needs a film. You've worked with filmers in the past, right? Yeah, but I had my own filmer when I made King of the Streets Part 2. You know, we had this guy with a red camera following me around for like a year, but it took too long to do. Like, I need to, you know, start filming shit in like 30 days or something. I don't know. But... That's tough because like, it's the same shit. Like, what's in it for the filmer, you know? Like, it, somebody's really got to love it. I, I told, I, I'm paying. I'm like, oh, hey, hey. Like, yeah. you know, Anthony Panzer has his own filmer. He pays him. And that kid rides pretty dope, too. The, the filmer is fucking ill at riding. Hell yeah. Yeah, I can't. So, I know, wonder what it's. I gotta talk to Panza on here, dude. I wonder what it's like to do the YouTube business. I mean, I have an idea, but that's dope. All right, so fuck it. No film. What if? What about like watching wise? Like, if you could have any filmer in the entire world come film you, who would you have? Besides bro, me, be, obviously. I'm, not, I don't, I'm, I'm gonna look close to the camera. I don't give a fuck. Whoever <laughs> could film, I don't give a fuck. Whoever could come film me, come film me, bro. Pause. But I need, I need a ride, bro. Like, I got cool. my little homeboys that could film, but they got. They got real life, man. I need somebody that can be like, all right, all day. Because I'm not going, bro, the shit I want to do mentally in my head, people might think is insane. People might say, but it's what I ha I saved all my fucking tricks, first of all. I ain't even tell nobody. I saved all my tricks because I watched everybody do the same shit for 10 years and laugh and go, the scene not changing. It ain't nothing. It ain't, what, what else? It's nothing going on, you know? And half the kids these days, they ride differently. Yeah. Shit's changed. All right, who Shit are you watching? So we don't care. We don't care about filmers. I love it. <laughs> but what about bikers? Who uh, who gets you excited if you see that they dropped a edit? Who are you gonna switch from Instagram to? Because that's that's almost the new pathway. Is like well, you see a promo for something on Instagram, you're like cool. But then like the ones where you're like, okay, what's the riders? What's the riders? What's the riders? What's the riders? I like. Well, I like. I'm a I'm a rep. You know, I'm a rep the town first. So I, lately, I've been watching Harrison. And Casey, you know what I mean. I call those the um the double the, the 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 double killers, the East Coast killers, right there, right now. Mm -hmm. Even though Casey's in Texas, but Texas taking care of him, so I salute Texas. Shout out to Texas taking care of Casey. But um, I'll be watching that other kid. I don't know his name, but he's from I think he's from Texas. He does all that like Smith backwards man, you kick flip shit, whip to man, you shit, ice pick shit. Matt Nordstrom. I think yeah, I think his name Matt Nordstrom. So yeah. that kid is pretty dope. I was I was watching my other homeboy. I think he's from Germany or some shit or Russia. But that's the, he was like the first kid I ever seen do ice pick hard threes. Yeedy, like Yeedy Blabble. He, he got a big ass nose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he got a little thick for a little while, but now I feel like he's back on it. Jerry, yeah, Jerry, like, Jerry so, Blabble. Happened with him. So yeah. happened when he stopped posting for a little bit, right? Well, dude, his fucking diet. Like, I he went and he stayed with Matt Ray. We're talking about the same dude, I think. Jerry Blabble um, is his name. And he was the first yeah, one that I saw him make ice, a, ice hard he threes got a look easy. Haircut. Yeah, yeah. With a big nose. Yeah, yeah. and he said, like, Matt was telling me he just eats like shit and just doesn't give a shit. And I love it. Like, he, he would just, like, house a couple McDonald's burgers and then drink a 40 or two or whatever. And that, he's young, so he's, like, doing that and still riding. But then, like, that re that catches up with you. And then he, I think nah, he got nah, big nah, for a little bit, little but he's, he's looking good lately. I think so. I, I tried yeah, to, come back up. I can't remember really, but I think I, I was the first one to reach out to him and connect him with Sabrosa. Could be wrong, but I think, I, I think I had something to do with that. If I remember, um, that's dope. So Jerry's, Jerry's cool. Jerry, Matt, Casey Harrison. That's a good little list. Um, uh, who else? Hold on. I got some, I'll be watching, I'll be watching motherfucking, uh, you know your boy, man. I'll be, oh, let me tell you. Let me tell you honest. I'll be watching that little the kids from Africa. Yeah. I'll be watching the kids from Africa. The kids from Africa have been killing shit. I don't know their names, but kids from Africa, salute y'all. They be riding dope. Fucking, um... You know, I always watch Curly for nothing. So, always, so I got those Curly in there. Curly, Curly is the bro. Dennison, you know, shit like that. Garrett always. Garrett always likes my shit on Instagram. Hell yeah. So I'm always, watch, I'm always watching them. You know what I mean? Um, Garrett's the fucking best. 
man, Gary. Uh, people Dude, don't know. Th- I he just did that clip of three Smith to backlash or three three hundred and sixty Smith hard one eighty backlash. I was like, fuck, it's so good, dude. I think I think I'll be honest with you, Gary right now is super sick, right? Yeah. But what if you if you really hold on, damn. If you really think about it, right? What's more important, the Gary now or the Gary when he was a kid? I, I love the Gary now, but I. Super, super loved the Gary when he was a kid, bro. Because he had them handing the balls all the way back. With they the were tight back. Ass <laughs> yeah. And, yo, he would eat his shit out of something so high, so crazy. And you were like, yo, how the fuck is it? Look? It's... As we get older, we all know Gary is fucking Tony Hawk of this shit. You know, that? you know what I mean? So we all know, like, we know who's the who's the who, you know? But the people that really ride, and seeing that shit from back in the day understands. Dude, he's been he's been good. It's crazy seeing clips and how far ahead of the game he was back then, and like the almost like the transition from because he always rode street, but like the from contest Garrett Young to where he's at now, where he's just like almost an artist picking what what tricks to do and where to do them at. When you can do everything, like you can just choose what to do. Like Simone, I fucking love it, dude. Um. All right. Cool. Who else? Who else? Um. Oh, um, who else? Fucking. You know what I miss too, man. My bad. My bad. Uh, I miss fucking um. My boy, man. I like. I fuck with Sean Richie Rich. This bitch has Sean McCanny. I call him Sean Richie Rich. <laughs> Sean Richie Rich. <laughs> so you know what I mean. Um. We was just talking about this fucking. You know, I talked about this kid the other day. Why the fuck I, I'm just the weed? Why the fuck I forgot his name? Um, Stevie, man. Oh yeah, dude. Love Stevie. I miss seeing Stevie, bro. If I seen y'all motherfucker somebody. I seen Stevie at a bar. I would have kidnapped Stevie. I'd have put that nigga in rehab. Yeah, dude. You know what I mean? I miss seeing Stevie ride, bro. We need to help Stevie this year, bro. All the riders. Let's go. We Let's go find Stevie. Stevie. We Hashtag Stevie. find Stevie. Fine fucking Stevie. Yep. Shout out to, you know, fucking Vegan all the time. Every time I see Vegan, he show mad love and support. Vegan's nice, you know, dude. He's a good human. Let me tell you something else. I don't know nobody else know. Since we're on the internet. So lately, New York City been building more... People could call them skate parks. I call them more street parks because the way they set Little up... Little plazas? Little pla... Nah, they got big plazas now. They got some shit over here. And I could say... They got four new plazas in Brooklyn. Four. Not one, two, four. Including with the other probably four they got that's already around. So it's like eight shit, eight new plazas in Brooklyn. They built new shit in the Bronx. Manhattan got mad new shit to ride to. You know, um, it's a lot of it's a lot of new setups. It's a lot of new setups, bro. So I don't know. This summer might be crazy. We don't know what's gonna happen, but yeah, and that's like that impacts a whole generation because now they have a place where they can see shit. Like they don't have to search BMX on their phone. Like they can go see stuff happening, and then the they have a place to practice tricks. It's like a whole different world. Because like I I don't think you had a plaza growing up. Like you're yeah, learning learning a feeble on a bench with one peg type shit. <clears throat> I feeble on the fucking. We had this ledge call on a, on a, on Atlantic Avenue back in the day. I used to feeble grind on that with one peg, right? A little screw yeah, on peg. blue peg. I think you said. Yeah, I had a 16-inch blue mongoose with the pedal brake. Fuck yeah. <laughs> with the pedal brake, too, no. Oh. Yo, the riders I was riding with when I was a kid was nice, bro. Like, I don't know if people don't know this, but I'm telling you, before I even heard of Ed and these guys and Animal, before I even knew what Animal was, I knew about Standard. Yeah. You know, I knew what Standard was. I never heard of Animal until I went to Manhattan. I was thinking about when you were talking about this on the come up one, I was like, I like that's just before my generation, like, I think you were like six or seven years before me when you were starting to get into that. And like, I, cause like standard wasn't a thing to me when I was like getting into it and watching videos. I know about it, but like, what's standard now? You know, it's, I don't know. I think they still make, I think they still make they're still in business. Um, and I, yeah, I just, I feel ignorant to it. I don't know if the, like the standard country I know was a huge monumental thing. And then since then, it's like there hasn't been much of a standard impact, at least in my, perspective have you seen what's the best shit that you've seen from standard over the past 10 years i see shit 
I ain't seen shit from nobody in the past 10 years. And let me really think. Nah. Right? I feel like wrong saying it, but I don't know. If they're still in business? Fucking good on them. All right. Let's see. Who are you watching? Best film. All right. We got to know. Uh, actually, I'll save that for last. I what, what are you most proud of in your BMX career so far? Oh. The most thing I'm proud of my BMX career is, you know, just doing what I wanted to do and making it how I wanted to make it. You know, I'm happy, bro. I had the cover. I jumped off a bridge. I got a DVD with Dave Mirror. I've been in the S Games. I fucking had ads. You know, I did basically everything I wanted to do. You know, I had, um, bro, I did a lot of shit with this fucking bike, bro. The stories is insane. Yeah. But you know, I, I have certain spots in New York City I would like to film. You know, I what have about, a lot of um, shit. That's good. I'm excited for you. Like, we just got to get you a filmer. But what's your favorite place that you've been because of the bike? My, nigga, I ain't gonna. I'm in a hood, man. I'm sorry to say that, but I was trying, trying to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so you've been to California and you've been to that's I've it. been to California no, and then North Carolina, right? Yeah, North Carolina. No, I've been to Georgia. Yeah, but Mira's and, shit. Where did Mira live? Alabama. That was North Carolina. Oh, it was that North Carolina? I think so. I could be wrong, but I think so. South Carolina, North Carolina. It, it, was, it was. I think it had to be South Carolina. Wherever, wherever oh. Mira lived. My homeboy lives out there. My best friend Manny, Manny Hood Happy. I follow him too. He rides bikes. I need some fucking garden work. Whatever the fuck you went in South Carolina, he could do it. I'm looking up where Dave Mira lived. Oh, they. Oh, Dave Mira lived in fucking um. Is that South? I think that's North Carolina or South. Greenville, North I Carolina. Forgot, I, I knew it was Greenville because Greenville was a big BMX hub for a hot. No, I miss. I miss fucking Mira, bro. Yeah. That's I was sad. thinking about this day because I was like, I'm about to buy these old mirror shit off of Facebook. I don't feel like people repping mirror the right way, you know, like back, you know. Yeah. I think mirror. I think mirror should be glorified a lot more still. Same thing, like you know, Hoffman's still out here. I I I seen Hoffman before. Hoffman just put on the shit life and shit. Hoffman's still out here riding, you know. But it's like to the new generation, this phone. These kids don't know the history. They really, yeah. It's interesting to think about. Because you have to, like, if you come in now and you're 15 years old, like, there's so much shit that you have to, like, almost, like, study history of BMX to have a good conversation about it. Even me, like, I, there's so much before me that I really don't know about. Like, it's just but, part of part of life. But the problem is with these kids these days, you're 15 trying to ride, then you got a fucking 10-year-old that's fucking riding a thousand times better than you. Then you just like, fuck it, I ain't doing this shit no more. Yeah. You, you, seen, the, you seen the Japanese 13-year-old kid? I don't. I, mean, I don't even think it's thirteen. He's like eleven or twelve. Sus- Sasuke, or Sasuke. Yeah. You ever, you ever swaggy school? dude. That, that little kid is nice too. But his family's probably pushing. You know, what I mean, you got your family yeah. pushing you. Fucking his ride like dad's that. Dad's out there with you pushing you. It's great. You know. That's like this other kid from Boston. The little kid from Boston. I forgot his name, man. I don't know. It. Little kid from Boston. He know who I'm talking about, but he nice. He got four pegs and shit like that. He's got no, pops, just... pops pushing. Yeah, they... he got pops pushing them. And the that's like it. you ever watch Baby D Blocks? Yeah, yeah. So Baby D Blocks is crazy too. See, that's another thing. When you push your kids like that, that's the same thing with George Durant. His father pushed him on that bike. I would love to see what where, where he's gonna be at four years from now if he's really you know still riding okay, this. A stuff. million followers, Baby D Blocks. That's a whole different ball game, dude. Just... And that's off the Woolies, bro. Woolies. Because it's relatable. Like, like what we do is there's such a high uh, learning curve to even just figure out how to bunny hop. Like takes so much effort versus you could pop a wheelie. Anybody can relate to that. And then you get good at wheelies and it's fun to watch. And maybe we should switch switch sports, dude. Quit jumping off of crazy shit. <laughs> just start doing wheelies, man. That was that was brought up in the come up interview. You uh, swerving through traffic. That never gets old. Like watching like GoPro footage of swerving through new york is fucking money yeah that's why i'm about to give me a gopro because you know i'll be laughing because everybody got their gopros right everybody mm-hmm. got their gopros but nobody ever seen d rose 45 on a gopro like riding really through new york the real yeah. way like yeah. my way not that everybody else, oh this is how you ride through new york no i'm gonna show you how you ride Watch through this. New York. yeah i'm gonna show you how you go right through lights with every car moving and you go through it 
Dude, I don't even think you need a GoPro at this point. You need a fucking phone mount for your head. And you don't even need an official one. You could get like a headband or some shit and then put your phone on your head and just mob and that saves money. And then you don't have to fucking transfer the footage from the GoPro or charge the GoPro. Because I have a GoPro. I'll send you a GoPro right now. I don't I don't use it. It's, it's a pain in the ass. But if you could figure <laughs> out how to use your phone to fucking film that shit, I'd, I'd be in. Um. All right, let's think. I, I got my last last question, but I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Uh, most proudest shit, birthday. scariest shit. What's the scariest shit? I think they asked you this in the come up one, but I don't think you really gave an answer. Like, what, Yo, what's the scariest shit you, you ever did? I used to, well, I can say the scary, it's, I got a lot of scary shit. Let me tell you something. I'm going to say this is the most official BMS clip in history. Not, I'm going to say for black people. Fuck it. I don't give, I'm going to push it out there like, because <laughs> yeah. people get mad at me because they say, oh, I tell them I'm the first black kid to have the the Rob BMS cover. And they say, oh no, what's name had the the, uh, the cover back in the day? Whatever the fuck his name was, right? And I tell them, listen, I'm the first black street rider to have the Rob BMS cover. So I already won. People could say, oh, this kid did the double peg hard three last year. I know. I seen the yes, it's dope. But I did that shit 20 years. You know, the cover's about 23 years old now. That's crazy to I think, think about. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it felt like it was yesterday. Huh. So, in history, right now, I'm the first black BMX rider to have a street rider to have a cover. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. So I already won when I did that. I was happy with just that. Was that the scariest thing? We really wanted. We wanted um. We rode bikes to do tricks to get acknowledged that we was nice. Maybe we get a sponsor. Or maybe whatever we get. But we just wanted our name to get out there and represent what we represent and how we felt about BMX riding. That's what it was about. Yeah. So, you know, we advanced from that to whatever, but I already won, bro. And was I'm about that, to do some shit for you. I know that FIBA was scary. Uh, tell me what the scariest shit was. What's the what's the uh, thing you I'm had not... to push through your head the most to do? I zoned off. This is we. Um, The scariest shit I did was definitely 540 off the bridge when I broke my bike. Because I tried to, three, I tried to do a three. And, um... I over rotated and I, and I broke my you fucking sure wheel. Sure did over rotate, bro. Most, that that clip just... is stuck in my mind from when I was like sixteen, still to this day. So when you, we were talking on the internet, that's in my head. Like, oh fuck, it's Black Man, dude. He did that fucking crazy three sixty and broke his wheel. I Yo, bro, that's what. Vinny, Vinny, and Glenn bitch ass filmed that. But let me tell you something. That motherfucking bridge, because they was like. You gonna jump this? I already jumped off it. I was like, I'm about to three off this. Shit. I try to three, but I just can't see on my right eye. So when I spent, I over rotated. But instead of just throwing the bike, you know, you can't throw the bike that high. You better just hold it and just take yeah. the impact. Yeah. Because if you don't hold the bike, you're gonna throw it. Your leg gonna land right. You're gonna buckle your knee, ankle, some anything. And you walked away from that, which is pretty amazing. And the handlebar scratched me right here, like almost took, took my fucking nipple off. Do you uh do you yeah. rock bar ends? Yeah, but sometimes that shit, shit, shit like that, ball in is the same fucking thing. Yeah, but dude, if you if it's like a, you know what I mean? Like you can get fully stabbed if you don't have a bar end versus like when you have a bar end, it might save you from getting impaled. Let me say something else. Another thing, let me say the most gangster, scary shit I did. Now, I think this is gangster because of this. I went to a skate park. Now, I don't know what the fuck is, I know his name, bro. What's the guy that's rapping with the gauges and shit and doing all the fucking nose willies with the brakes? Rapping? He's rapping? Yeah, he was, he's making rap. He's rapping. He, Rick you know, Thorne? Out. No. no. Not Rick Thorne. White dude? Black dude? Yeah, he got a ponytail. You know what I'm talking about? He do the decades a lot. What the fuck is his name again, bro? Decades, rapping, and front brakes. Maybe host this shit, acting funny. You know what I'm talking about? It sounds like it sounds like Rick Thorne, but it's not. Fuck. Oh man. I forgot his name, but you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, when I did that 360 in Georgia, right? Was he a character in a video game in Dave Mira? No, no. Is he? I don't even fucking know. You probably put me on this. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Um, he's gonna come up interview with me though. With Adam. What's Catfish? Yeah, catfish. My, <laughs> young, my, my homeboy catfish, catfish does rap. Does he have gauges? Catfish has gauges. <laughs> I think he got gauges, right? All right, that's catfish. 
Yo, Catfish, what the fuck is up, man? Shout know, out to fucking Catfish, bro. Shout out to fucking Catfish. Anyway, I went to a skate park in Georgia. I had no bike because my bike broke. It's about a thousand kids. I'm looking at everybody's bike. They scared, saying, oh, shit, that's black, man. He going to steal somebody's bike. I take somebody's bike, <laughs> right? I pedal. I don't even try to. I don't do no 180. I don't do nothing. I don't even do a bunny hop. I went straight to the highest quarter in the back of the fucking skate park. The quarter had to be about 15 feet high. I didn't even look at the motherfucker. I looked at Catfish. I said, Catfish, I'm going to three it. He said, Black, you going to three it? I said, yeah. He said, for real? I said, I'm going to do it right now. I went. I threed the shit. I landed it. First trial. Boom. Hit your head on the handlebars. The, the helmet blew up in the air. That wasn't my bike. So that's the most craziest gangster shit I think I ever did in my life. And then you left because you broke the kid's and bike I, and, and then you took off. <laughs> yeah. And I broke his fork and everybody was screaming my name and I was shy. And I was just like, I was sleeping in my car. I was homeless. You know what I mean? In Georgia. So I was like, I'm out. Fuck it. And I actually <laughs> yeah, did it go. for a skate park called Hazard County. He told me to go to the skate park. I'm gonna give, I'm a, yeah, I'm going to give you some money. Shout out to Hazard County. I'm going to give you some money. And I need you to um do a trick for me over there, you know? But I did that was the most gangster shit I did in bike riding. In my oh, yeah. eyes. Because who you know took somebody's bike out of crowd and attempted something that you could break your fucking neck on and land and walk yep. away. And then leaves too. <laughs> that's fine. Yeah, leaves. Yeah, that's a good move. Um, anything else before I ask you the last question that you want to say? Um I jumped that rail hop in Brooklyn, I broke my back wheel. I love that feeling, bro. Like when you break your bike doing something sick. That's yeah, the one in the King of New York edit. Yeah, yeah, I, that I was jumped a that. Heavy rail hop. I was made that. I watched that today, and I was wondering, like, how many fucking back wheels have you broken? You know, that's got to be like just part of the game for you. I think that's the third one. Like, I like doing something, like, like, you yeah. know. But that rail hop is crazy because I had to jump on a ledge and then jump again. I know yeah. some other kids came. Rolled the ledge and then hopped it. That's easy. But the other way I did it, where I had to jump and then jump again, that's insane. You know, I did um over crooked ground both ways on Police Plaza. That was that was you know that's over big. double pay. That's that's back in the day. What else I did? You know, I did. I love I love my Smith tail whips. You know, mm -hmm. I love doing tail whips. Dude, yeah, and, um, watching you do the Smith shit, you make the Smith to pull up look decent. You know what I mean, like. People who do the Smith Hard 180 the way that you do it, the way that, like, I that's how I also Smith Hard 180. You know what I'm talking about? Like, yeah, I know, a, I know. There's I know, a Smith sometimes shimmy the Smith, and then there's a Smith pull up. You go, you go, I, I kind of do a Smith and bunny hop right out of it. Yeah, me too. You know what but I mean? I, so some people do Smith and then, like, sock their back wheel over to come out off the yeah, ledge. But yeah. if you do it that way, you can't really do no tricks out of it. You know what I mean? Like, if you Smith pop and jump, you can fucking do anything out of it, out of the shit. Yeah. Yeah, what did I see you do? You did this setup where it was like ledge to ledge, and you did Smith to Smith, and I was like, I like that. You know, there's that like that's a controversial it's topic. Does, it's the other kid with the glasses does that shit too. Yeah, he's kind of Grant Castelluzzo, huh? Grant Castelluzzo. Yeah, he does the Smith shit too, pretty dope. Yeah. You know? Yeah, he's he's slimming up too. Grant's on, Grant's on it, dude. He's he's the example of back in the day thinking about that Smith pull up shit. Same with uh Corey Borgowski. like. Smith to like bunny hop or like fucking you know what I'm saying like I Bro, always wanted to do it the ledge, shimmy way. It's like I like that trick because if I say if I want to do a it's a, it's a ledge and it's a rail hop, I could Smith the ledge and hop the rail hop instead of like trying to feeble and hopping over. It's not the same hop. Yeah, you know this. Different I wish thing. I could fuck the nose, Willie. Oh, I I can't for shit. I think it's because I'm fucking six one. I saw you. You did it. You, you you did a nose wheelie this long and uh fucking the split part you had with Nigel fucking not flip side not flip side living in exile I was like okay please. yeah I guess I but I'm talking about these motherfuckers right now doing nose wheelies for blocks I'm trying yeah. to do a nose wheelie two three blocks <laughs> <laughs> maybe yeah, it's dude. my setup bro like I'm funny with my setup I fucking hate nose males I can do them but it takes me hours to to get them going actually like. Curly knows Willie's fucking sick. Curse Adam. I've been watching Curse Adam too. Uh, Curse yeah. Adam knows Willie's pretty fucking sick too. But I think they all short. All, all the guys that's fucking short could knows Willie far, bro. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, BMX riders who are short have an advantage, I think. I don't know what the fuck it is. It's like, I'm fucking 6'1. I'm fucking huge. People look at my hands. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm 6'3, dude. Me like, I, I know the feeling. Fucking, they might not even know you was this fucking big. Pause, black man. Like, I didn't know you was this huge riding a bike. <laughs> oh, hey, black man. You're big. 
but that's i don't know I, there is something to it it's like pr the proportion like if you if we got on a bigger scale bike the balance point would feel better for us versus like you're smaller and you're on this literal kid's bike the balance point's gonna feel good i don't know dude it's also just fucking practice but I fucking, practice I, knows I, wheels I, you can get them i fucking hate the fucking kids just doing the woolly bikes but trying to ride like bmx feet with it that shit sucks stop that shit yeah and the city bike shit too stop fucking doing the city bike shit yeah it lost Tom its like Rome novelty first motherfucker to have the city bike and make a million views on YouTube. It was Tyrone. That's when it. city bike first Done. came out, Tyrone was the first one to do it. And I told his ass he should have ran with it because he could have been getting money over YouTube. It's cool. It's funny and shit, but nah. All you right. know, let's, get back to, let's get back to this fucking BMX bike shit. Who is Black Man's Mount Rushmore? Mount Rushmore of BMX. So four people. Uh, that had the biggest impact on you throughout your career. You know what I'm talking about? You know what Mount Rushmore is, right? I know. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to say number one, Van fucking Homan. Right? And I'm yep. going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, uh, number two, the Gons. Right? Um, number three, I'm going to say, you bitch-ass nigga, Edwin, you's a bitch-ass nigga. I'm going to put your name in there because I'm not a hater, bitch. And <laughs> niggas ask you a question, you better say D-Rose. But I'm going to put Edwin number three, you know what I mean? And I'm going to put, um, because, you know, I, I'm going to put Edwin number three. And number four, oh, on number four, I'm going to put uh, Matt Hoffman and Dave Murray. I'll put them together. Nice. I'll take it. And number it. six, number six, Ryan Nyquist. Let's go. I'm, 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 I'm going to put that. That's what, that's what I got. But definitely Van Homan number fucking one. Because I watch Little Devil every fucking day as a fucking kid. And whoever knows about bike riding, whoever really loves riding knows. When you watch that fucking video when he was a kid, he came outside different. One of the most influential BMX riders of all time, man. Van Homan. I mean, Rat kid, Rat kid fucked it up too in the gun. So it's yeah. like, it don't get no, you know. All I wild. Man, I was I got to talk to Van Homan on here not too long ago and like he's a, he's in Europe living doing like work for the Olympic committee 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 and just living Europe life right now and I'm stoked for him. It's cool to see like <laughs> life life after pro BMX or and then still carrying the torch and doing shit with Source and all the shit Van's doing is dope. All right. So he still uh, rides though. Oh yeah, fuck yeah. And he like the the only difference is he's not doing shit where you could die. He's not just he's just not doing dead man shit, but he's still looking for spots. He's still fucking No, nah, I know. He don't need to. He don't yeah. that's what I'm saying. He don't need to. He's yeah. that you know, Holman, baby. Clap, give a clap to Van Homer, son. Yep. Go watch the fucking little devil video. If you don't know what that is, you need to watch it. Yeah. Uh all right. So what's the rest of your day look like? I think this is it. We're gonna wrap it up. What you want for the rest of the day? Oh, it's New Year's, right? I'm staying in a fucking house. If it's New Year's, it's New Year's Eve. This shit come out tomorrow, New Year's Day. Stay in the, you better stay in the fucking house. I'm not going out. As you get older, smarten the fuck up. Yeah, I'm not doing it's shit not tonight, dude. I'm going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Happy New Year. I'm going to feel good in the morning. Happy New Year, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for coming on, dude. Um, Appreciate it. Yeah, that's it. Let's end it. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. That's the end of the video. See you next week. Like, share, show the sh like, and share the shit. You know what I'm saying. All right, bye.